Let's go. <laughs> what up, Shrew Gang? Shrew Gang, let's go. Hey, we got Papa Ape already in the chat. We got Parker. We got Born of Bodom. Let's go, my dogs. Shrew Gang. Hold on a second. I need to um, make sure it's coming out of the right thing. Uh, uh. Yeah, Born of Bodom throwing some Shrew Gang emoticons in the chat. Man, did we take a hit today? Well, to answer your question, yes, we really did. And it wasn't... It actually wasn't really wasn't that bad. It was just more of a uh, patience type of thing. It was like, man, we were so close to breaking out for AMC over and over and over again, especially above this VWAP line, and we just continue to reject in all aspects. Up here at 44, and we were tickling 50, uh, 45. It seems that we vibrated above it tw in two different case scenarios. We rejected, finally made that resistance at 44 flat, continued to reject and reject. Uh, same thing when we're running back up to it. Oh, <laughs> I wish. Imagine. Could you imagine? Could you imagine those nasty candles? How's everybody feeling today? Born about him. How you feeling today, Parker? I already know how Papa Ape is feeling. Feeling great. So today is the Wheel of Shrewdness, and I'm jacked to the T. My teats are jacked. Anything that could possibly be jacked is currently jacked. And it's looking like a, it's, it's looking like. It was a very weird winner today. That's all I have to say. It's looking like um, Tilray was going to win by a hair today. And there was a stock that was almost in last that shot up to the moon today. And it, it came in first. And what was that stock? BBIG. Oh, it's actually down. Wow. Maybe the gains didn't uh, hold itself towards the end of the day. Watch this crazy run AMC's about to go on. <laughs> it says Pop Ape. I wish. Baby Ruthie says, hey, hey, what's up, baby Ruthie? Nice to see you, my G. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was a little less flat than I anticipated, baby Ruthie, but on a good note, I was expecting a bounce at 1090, and we got it at 11 flat. On a good note, good note. And, of course, there's nothing really different. We were expecting this all day today, but as you can see, yesterday's consolidation all day was just a massive falling wedge. Today, all flipping day. Where is it? All day, falling wedge. Like that's, it's literally like an all day consolidation now. It doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. So what doesn't make sense now, it makes sense soon. BB taking a little bit of a rejection after market while GME and AMC see some green bars. It's looking good for BB. It just fell under the VWAP and it's already bouncing back up to test the top. We want these to hold the VWAP after market uh, today, but since it is Friday, uh, sadly, uh, volume is always death on days like today. And aftermarket seems to either be sideways or more bearish than anything. I'm bleeding with you. I'm bleeding with you. Ruth, Ruth, <laughs> baby Ruth. <laughs> By the way, baby Ruthie, is that is that what your name is off of? You are right. It wasn't too bad, but like, come on, already enough with the BS. It's so true. It's just like it's just kicking the can down the road. And you know what's even crazier? Gets me jacked. Well, when it comes to BB in particular, AMC is a different case scenario, but and BB's case scenario. Let's do it. I mean, you probably already know what I'm about to say, but <laughs> it was like, dude, just say it. Hey, either way, BlackBerry max pain for calls this week was 1150. Max pain for puts was 1050. Last week, max pain for calls was 1150. Max pain for puts was 950. And we've closed in between the, both of those. What is this coming up on my screen right now? Gee, pause. But um, yeah, I mean. <laughs> It's, it was so 50-50, the most 50-50 it has been in the options market between max pain for puts and calls, a dollar off for BlackBerry, and we still, on Friday, closed in between. 50 cents below max pain for calls and 50 cents above max pain for puts. I don't see this playing out for much longer. In all totality, I really don't. It's more frustrating than anything just to see it so blatant in front of our faces. But on, on a good note, the reason, I mean, for it being so blatant, you can easily see right through it. <laughs> yeah, is it Goonies or Candy? Yeah, BB to the moon on Tuesday, but not worried. Love the Goonies. Let's go. It is from the Goonies. Pop Ape told me it was from the Goonies, baby Ruthie, but I was sitting there and I was like, I don't know. I mean, they probably didn't have this candy. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was like, they probably didn't have this candy when you were young, Papa Ape, but they do now. They definitely did. Baby Ruth. <laughs> Either way, though, uh, the candy is on Goonies, too, so. That's the whole reason why the guy said Baby Ruth. I love the Goonies too. It's just been a while. 
Let's do AMC too. Oh, this is not. This is not what I was hoping for. It's crazy. It's crazy. And it makes no sense, but the options market is tying in the most to the price activity of the actual stock market. Not surprising, but why? Why? Let's see what max pain for this this week was for AMC. So we closed exactly at four at $44 flat. Max pain for calls <laughs> was 45. Max pain for puts. <laughs> For max pain for puts for AMC was 43. So it was between 43 and 45, and we closed exactly at 44. One more week, maybe maybe next week as well. It can play that it can play out like this, but I don't see with the max pain for calls and puts being so 50-50 throughout these last three weeks. I don't see it continuing to play out like this. What was it? Where was it though, for real? I didn't even see it. Hold on, let me play it. Oh, it was uh, Cindy done my dog. Hey, you didn't have to, but just know whether you like it or not, you're a part of the Shrewd Gang. Shrewd Gang. Now, if you want to be an ex part of the exclusive Shrewd Gang, you may have to pay a couple dollar haulers, but unfortunately, I was screaming at everybody through a virtual screen to hop on the train early while it was free. It is what it is. <laughs> hey, we got Lori in the chat. Let's go, my dog. Let's see Jim. Crystal had to take off again. Two to no, another one. No, Crystal. Hey, just know if you need a place to chill, talk, whatever the hell you want to talk about, Shrew Gang's here for you at any at any moment in time. Um, it's got to be rough, especially with something, especially with that happening right before the last time, but or right after the last time. So now I get to chill with you guys for a bit. I guess that's a good note. <laughs> uh, please feel better, Crystal. It's that, it's, it's got to suck immediately after the last, but feel better, feel better. Nothing. Going to crack a Miller life, a Miller high life. It should be a Miller high life, but to watch AMC run, making me jealous. Papa Ape, you're downstairs doing your rain dance and your grass tutu, and I'm sitting up here with no Miller high life in my hand. Before going to the hospital to see if there's a better solution than live in a bubble. I wouldn't do it. I mean, you see people that are allergic to the sunshine, like still becoming crazy because they have to stay inside all day, and they still make the choice to go out in a massive suit that covers every single skin cell so it doesn't get touched by, I don't even know, by the sun rays. Either way, I would never, ever, I would never, ever live in a bubble like you just said. Goonies or candy. Hey, I'm here. I'm working on an offer with a client, so I'll be in and out. Lori, do your thing. Make that money. Make that shmoney. <laughs> we got Clownfish in the chat. We got Cindy Dog, Ricky Star. Nice to see y'all, boy. Hey, sorry for waking up your churn. Sorry for yelling in your ear. Clownfish says, hello, everyone. Hello, Clownfish. How are you feeling today? Hey, Southern Red. All you have to do is say you are a part of the Shrewd Gang, and then they'll buy that house right away. That's true, though. You know, that has tend to happen in the past. That does tend to happen in the past. Another beautiful day, says Ricky Star. I agree. Another be, be beautiful day. Shrewd Gang, where is no cap? He is so sexy. <laughs> I guarantee you. <laughs> I guarantee he was going to pop in. So you'd be like, what? What? Did someone just say that? He's probably over there at, at Cocaine Alley right now, though, doing his business deals. As of right now, though, he is not in the stream. Oh, speak of the angel, and he shall come. Pause. We got Cordero in the chat. What's up, my dog? <laughs> nice to see you, old boy. What did AMC close at? It says Born and Bodum. 44 flat. $44 literally flat. Maybe 43. It, sa it says 43.90. No, it says 44.02. It's not right though. It seems like we opened up here. We fell down to this range during this one minute candle. We fell up to this. We ran up to this range in this one minute candle, and then we closed at forty three ninety seven. Still, almost forty four flat. Craziness. Hey, um, <laughs> Crystal says it's more like a literal death spiral. <laughs> As a, living in a bubble, though, I've, it reminds me of that movie with uh, Adam Sandler in it a long time ago. When I was a, when I was a young little churn, and there was this one guy that was just a germ freak. And then, of course, after watching that movie, it, after watching that movie, a movie, it made me want to go outside and eat earthworms, um, roll around in mud like a pig. Just because I never wanted to aspire to be that, you know what I'm saying? In a membrane, Crystal, wish you the best. Hope you feel better. Says Born and Bodum. Uh, shrewd gang gang. I got Cordero in the chat. Shrewd gang. Thank you. I appreciate those good vibes. No problem, Crystal. Anytime. Say the rhyme. 
I'm here too, but not making money, says Goldwing. <laughs> no. Uh. Hey, go Spike, go Spike if you missed it. Um, I'll go over it in, in a little bit. I'll go over it in a little bit, but it's been right in our face for three weeks, and a lot of people haven't been able to pay attention to it because a lot of people d doesn't want it to continue to happen. However, it's been happening for the past three weeks now, like I, like I just said. Hey, <laughs> Goldwing saying, but I did hit that like button. He does speak facts. And if you're all watching the stream and you haven't liked it, help a G out. Help help a G out. If I was watching your stream, I would like it too. Hey, yo, what's good, my guys? We got the not funny to advise you for the shrewd game. Shrewd game. <laughs> we got Sean in the chat, my dog. <laughs> yes, sir. No, I'm not, but I would love to be, uh, I would love to be seeing it lately. No cap is so funny. <laughs> he is. He's a very funny guy. I'll, I, I kid you not, when there was nobody in the stream, like maybe, maybe t what was it, five, six, seven, when it was just Born of Bodom, me, um, Cordero, Papa Ape, there was, some, there was a, f a lot of other people too back then, but Cordero, man, <laughs> there was always something, it was always something, every time he said something, I just, I had to keep myself, I I was I was on like um, I don't even know it was like I just did a bunch of crack watching it watching Cordero because he did does take me to Cooking Alley every now and then but regardless of all that everything he said I had to try to see through it because it was always a joke it was always to catch me lacking <laughs> just a, he's a great great guy great guy Crystal says I relate Goldwing I threw some at works today let's check that out too works show us what you're made of oh after hour I mean after hours already seen a massive bar but this is only one minute candle. Seems like it got halted. So I'm trapped until it goes up again. No! It's impossible to be a bag holder if you average down. But you're not really bag holding in this case scenario. What you want to see next, Crystal, is if you want to hold through it for the tiniest bit, you have these two stronger support ranges you could bounce off of based on off of recent price activity in the past. So you really just want to run down. You want to catch a support at one of these ranges, which would be good because you would also be catching a support early. With you in this falling wedge range, we have a, this line right here to anticipate a rundown and a third strong long-term, or actually fourth long-term bounce on this descending support. That's going to be beautiful to set you up for a leg up. However, if you catch that support early, as in on one of these two uh, bars right here, or even the lowest range 250 flat, you just don't tickle the resistance like you did the last four times. You're getting a lot of a, you're getting a strong run up, a lot stronger than the last four dips that you had. So that should be the anticipation of you getting that clean breakout over the falling wedge to start testing some of these last areas. Works though, uh, I'm probably going to go bullish on it if it does break out because if you bring it into the daily chart, regular candles. Um, where is it? Yeah, regular candles. You can see there's a massive gap waiting to be filled. Of course, it looks a little wonkier than before, but this gap is all the way up to price point at $3.60. And gaps don't like to be in, st uh, in stocks whatsoever. Anytime there generally is a gap, it doesn't matter. There's no, there's no time stamp. It could be a month. It could be a year, but they generally always get filled. Um, so as much as I want it to fill, it could be another month, right? It could just continue to abide by this trend for a month. However, it seems like if you do catch support early, you could be setting yourself up for a nasty push. NVIS looking beautiful right now too. Not even just the aftermarket though. Like what is that? <laughs> Not even just the aftermarket, just in totality. Showing a lot of strength as well. That's what you're rocking with. You're in a falling wedge. Now you're in a 50-50 uh, channel, 50-50 pattern to set yourself up for either a leg up or another rundown to set yourself up for a new trend afterwards. Regardless, you're on a descending resistance and a ascending support. I'm looking for a third bounce on the bottom to indicate that it's strong pattern. And then I want to run in between this little triangle until you get a pop above or below. NVI is looking beautiful though. Love that movie, says Born Aboda. Me too. Are you the girl who sent me a Facebook invite? How did you find me? Says Cordero. <laughs> what? <laughs> we got some movers. PLL is looking strong. Let's check them out. Hey, BB, show us what you're made of, dog. Aftermarket rip. I'm just kidding. I would like I would like for it to happen, but I don't really see it happening. Either way, you just now made yourself a red to red bounce. This is a prediction line. You should never do TA this way until you get a third strong bounce. But since it's the one minute scalping candles, we're just going to play with what we can play with. Touch a red to red to see if it can abide by this case scenario. 
if it falls under, don't worry. Because when a, the great thing about a prediction line is that you can always move it. <laughs> you can always move it to that second strong bounce. Crystal says, how do I average down? Wait, I figured it out. You buy more when it drops. Oh yeah, it's facts. It's, it's facts. It's something that every investor should know. It's something that every investor usually knows, but it's the main thing that every investor tends to forget. Uh, it's impossible. It's literally impossible to be a bag holder in any stock that you're in if you're saving dry powder uh, to average down. It can be a tedious process. It took me months to get into my position into AMC. It took me not, not months, but probably one month to get my full position into BB. So it takes a little bit of time. It's tedious, but it's a lot better. It's, you and your bank account will be thanking you in the long term. I'll tell you that right now. Cordero says, whoop D. <laughs> whoop D. Oh, my that was me, but you don't know me, but you know my girl Keisha in Alabama. Hey, we got Cordero worldwide, dog. Worldwide. Well, yes, I do know Keisha. It's a small world. It's a small world here over here at the Shreed Gang. Facts. Goldwing, Ghost Bike, Ghost Bike speaking facts in the chat. Well, as always, they didn't hit the sub button. They couldn't find their way back. Their loss. <laughs> hey, that, I, I can't find any other way to word that. It's beautiful. Seems like it came straight out of a, uh, I don't even know, just like a poem or something. Goldwing Ghost Bike always has the best little phrases every now and then. <laughs> and it's always about liking the stream too. It's like, what? Clownfish says, let's talk about averaging down. I'm back holding a bunch of stuff I thought was worth getting into. And then eight months later, I'm still red. Did you, are you saying you didn't average down? I'm back holding a bunch of stuff I thought was worth getting into. And then eight months later, I'm still red. Averaging down. Clownfish, clownfish in the chat though, for real. <laughs> I hope you're not bag. I mean, I hope you're not still bag holding, but you said you're still red. Yeah, bag holding is just a terrible process. It is. But I, I guess I should have confirmed what I said. It is, pos it is possible to be a bag holder while you're averaging down, but you should never really be getting into stocks you don't have conviction in. So conviction is the first thing you look for. And then in order to build that conviction to a healthy point to a comfortable point, you average down to that demand zone as, or as close as possible. So when you catch some sort of rip or even the slightest run up to a supply zone, you're already going to be green, green machine. MBS, show us what you're made of, man. What's the regular candles looking like though? <laughs> it's going to fall right back down to the same exact range. Damn, you hate to see it. Bam, 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 bam. I can't, Clownfish, Clownfish says I can't average down everything. I agree. I mean, that, that's a, that's true. Hey, this is the, <laughs> I could show you something right now real quick. Um, remember, I'm, I just started investing a couple years ago too. So I was a rookie not too long ago. I just, I'm just now learning all this stuff not too long ago. But every day that passes, it's just, it's more deeper embedded into this brain of mine. Regardless, I want to show you one thing. Clownfish. Why didn't it, why didn't it pull up? It's some pretty interesting-ish, not going to lie. Because back then, when I started streaming, only four months ago, maybe five as of now. but Oh, actually, it was only three. No, four. No, four. No, three. <laughs> where's, my, where's my positions? Yeah, look at this. Look at, look at Pop A. Oh, the stock market king. I miss you. If they average down, they wouldn't be bag holding eight months on. If they average down, they wouldn't be bag holding. Well, that's the difference because there's stocks that can fall for eight months straight. There's stocks that can fall for 16 months straight. There really just has to be buying pressure. There really just has to be... There has to be a, some, some sort of catalyst to get retailers to bat an eye towards the stock. Because if you think a stock's going to rip, if TA points to the stock is going to rip, but there's no buyers, it's almost going to always end in a bearish result. Uh, my portfolio four months ago. Look how, look how many different stocks I was in. My BlackBerry, I had 10 shares at 860. <laughs> it took me a long time to get my full position into it, but I've been in it for a minute. Y'all pumped for the seventh of MVIS. Isn't that that, um, aren't they, have something, aren't they having some sort of like, it's like a show, right? Hold on a second. I need to get it right. Oh, IAA mobility show. 
It's basically them flexing their security and services. <laughs> I would want to be a part of that. I would want to see that. Cordero got a hey, got a fan in the chat though, for real. Okay, but you are so sexy, for real, for real. That's not me saying it, by the way. So pause. Pause. I used to be the girl who picked her up. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Southern Red putting some laughing emoticons in the chat. So I was born a vote. I'm reiterating a while. It took a long time for AMC to bump, and I was pretty oh for to for AMC to pump, and I was pretty scared the whole time. I had to learn to step back and ignore it. It's true. It's true. Uh, what was my AMC position down here? You can't even see it. That's how many stocks I had during this time. Yuck! Yuck! And now, now I'm down to three stocks because I, I I took my gains out of all the other ones that I made money off of after slowly but surely averaging down into them. It was barely gains for some of them. Some of them I was down barely. But as of right now, I have three stocks in my portfolio. And this is where the stock market's brought us to today. Crazy. A lot better portfolio though. Almost 7,000 more in it. 6,000, my bad. But probably 6,000 less stocks. MVI is taking a fat old tinker winker. You can see the run up that we had right before, I mean, right before this rundown, it was just setting you up for a massive rundown. You can see if I bring the regular candles that there was a massive gap waiting to be filled. You actually got that filled with a long legged doji candle, but huge rundown. And it ain't even 441 yet. Sadly, they do show this on Robin Hood. Let's boo the hedgies. <sighs> what can you do other than cry together? We cry together, right? <laughs> Got that clean bounce, but you're seeing a lot of bearish activity. BB was in this wedge formation, got that prediction line. Wanted to run down to test it for the third time and saw a little bit of weakness. Had a gap right here in this one minute candle too. Imagine if I called gap fills in this one minute candle. I don't think anybody would be able to, or anybody would really even want to pay attention to that. AMC run up test the VWAP line. Hopefully we can get a clean break through it. But as you can see, it's the same exact resistance that we're testing. That was the support earlier during the aftermarket opening. Regardless, uh, let's go ahead and talk about some of the wheel of shrewdness, man, because we do have, it's a, it's a $20 pull. I mean, it's $18 as of right now, but with me in it, it should automatically bump up to 20. So it is going to, but regardless, let's see what it's rocking with as of right now. Who won? Who won? Who won? It's getting close, man. We, we do spin today. So if you don't have your stocks, get yourself in check, get yourself in check. Chad White is sadly not going to be here, but he let me know his stock. Mm -mm -mm. What if I get picked first, Chad? What if, what if I just pick your stock? <laughs> that would be so messed up. But he better hope he he better hopes he gets picked first. Regardless, this is what you're rocking with. Is this real? No, this is real. <gasps> BBIG fell. No way, dude. When I posted the update today in the sh in the Shrewd Gang Discord, let's see what it was looking like. Not that. <laughs> the wheel of shrewdness. Yeah. Hey. Look at BBIG. Look how fat it ripped. It went from all the way down here to the top. And now you see Tilray slowly but surely taking that gain. Interesting stuff, man. That means Baby Ruthie is the winner of this week. Baby Ruthie, oh my goodness. Yes, yes, yes. You get $42, Baby Ruthie. Um, what's your Venmo? What's your cash app? I'll send it to you right now. Or if you just want me to like paypal you or something i can also do that for real though let me know if you're not if you're not here right now though regardless you can just type it in the chat too whatever your venmo is luckily you could get some people that are that love baby ruthie behind the scenes and they want to send you some dollar haulers as well <laughs> either way tilray slowly but surely grinded up into the first place a couple days ago and since then it's been maintaining the first place bbig as volatile as it is ran down after being first in, on tuesday um after being last on monday almost last today and then ran back up to being first came right back down to second it took a long time for amc to pump um that's a lot of stocks <laughs> yeah that's so true that's kind of what my first account looks like i know i can average down it's just frustrating yeah it is it's frustrating because like once it happens it happens the only way you can get yourself out of it is by averaging down but if the conviction's not true for all of the stocks, then why would you even want it? Why would you even want to average down in all of those stocks? I get what you're trying to say, Clownfish. It's a rough position. It's a rough position. I down when I get a good win. Your stock strats are much healthier than mine, says Crystal. <laughs> I've been going from I'll buy 10 of these to I'll buy 100 of these. Damn. You sound like hedge funds, though. I mean, in a good way, right? But nowadays, you see blocks of 100 shares, blocks of 1,000 shares. It's being pushed in through the bid to halt our momentum. When it comes to all of these stocks... 
clownfish. Some of these stocks I just said in chat earlier are good ones to look at too. Oh, my bad. Oh, God damn it, Sean. You're supposed to yell at me when this stuff happens. I'm just kidding. But I do want to look at some of these. We're going to take a look, a quick little gander at PLL soon. We're going to take a quick little gander at KNBE as well. I saw that one ripping yesterday, right? The one we were talking about yesterday. KNBE. So PLL. KNBE. Um, word. Oracle PM. Let's run it. Uh, run it. Uh, run it. Uh. I wonder if no cap is the one behind Cindy's profile. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> it's Cindy's like, I love you so much. You're so hot. Um, I know you from so long ago. And then Cordero's like, hey, yo, you, you, you might need to chill, brah. <laughs> or maybe he's just a player. I think he is. I think he is. Some of the stocks. I thought I knew this wheel stock thing was, and now I don't. Is this like a horse race, but stocks? Indeed it is. It's basically this. Everybody pays me $2 to be added into the to the admissions for the Wheel of Shrewdness. We're spinning today at 4.30, maybe 4.45 since 4.30 is only five minutes away. If you still want to be entered into it, all you have to do is pay me $2 haulers, and it goes straight into the pool. I don't take a dollar from you, dog. And even if I win, I still don't take a dollar from you. Uh, it gets The pool gets pushed over to next week. So what happens is I just keep it updates in this Discord. Um, the first week it was a $20 pool. I won <laughs> with Sundial. We tracked it all week, and by the end of the week, Sundial was in first. So instead of me taking any money, I push it over to next week. With next week being over $20 or $22 it was, uh, it was actually $10 at this point. So it was $30 in total. But the day after, we made it to $42 in this total pool, basing off of the last week into this week. And we just tracked the new stocks that everybody picked when we spin the wheel. A week long basis, all the stocks are abiding by each other's formations, by the same percentages as well. So it's never more or less in anybody's favor. Either way, uh, we just track them. We just track them pretty much. It's, it's a simple process, it's just hard to explain. It really is. Oh, AMC, show me what you're made of. So we're just bouncing back and forth in between this sideways channel. Hopefully, we can get a pop above, above into a bullish case scenario, but in all totality, every single aftermarket we've seen in the past couple of weeks now has just been either flat or back and forth back and forth back and forth nothing really too crazy maybe soon though a non-financial advisor thanks i've i literally have never heard any of those me <laughs> are you talking about the last stocks or just the stocks that oh non-financial advisor yeah it's crazy he just calls out ones that not too many people know about and they seem to rip 90 percent in one day we got xavier la Roche. I'm finally green on KL, KPLT after the big drop last week. KPLT. Okay. Let's check out KPLT. Then we're going to bring up some of these other stocks that are being heavily talked about in the Discord as of right now. KPLT. 13% a day. My goodness. So you were just setting yourself up for a massive invert. I mean, a massive rounding bottom formation. You could say cup and handle, but in all totality, you don't see it. The neck, I mean, you see the neckline all the way up here for 960. So if it was going to be a cup and handle, you'd have to get something like this. Man, I would take a fat sip out of that cup and handle there for real. Unfortunately, though, when you break it into a more mac microscopic view, you're not quite there. You're already seeing consolidation before you even run up to this range. Why did you dip so hard? What was the catalyst for this happening? KPLT News. This was the 9th. Okay. They actually didn't have any news in it, uh, for it until the 10th. Reports quarter two revenue, 77 million. What was the 10th? Oh, okay. So their, their earnings shifted to a quarter two net loss while the revenues were rising. Announce the second quarter. What's their results? I mean, I just do. I just want to do a quick gander at the revenue and their earnings per share. Because there was there a real reason why it had to drop so much. Okay, so total revenue was seventy-seven point five million, an increase of twenty-seven percent year over year. That's beautiful. Their year-to-date revenue reached one hundred fifty-eight million, as compared to one hundred three million last year. Beautiful. Not much growth, but growth in totality, an increase of fifty-two percent year year over year. What's the earnings per share? Donut flavored coffee, by the way, if you're wondering why I'm hiccuping. I can't help it. Oh my goodness. Don't blame it on me. Blame it on the coffee. ED, um, so that was it, man. Oh my goodness. They took big hits in all aspects other than their revenue. 
Net loss was eight point one million. They just they they put out a quarter two earnings. It seems like some people that put out news tried to turn it into a bullish result, but uh, you just really got a strong bearish rundown. However, buyers were didn't really see too much uh, bad case scenarios, any any bad catalysts really coming from it, and that dip was bought up immediately. Massive growth potential, seeming like you're getting a little bit of trouble testing this resistance. You want to get a clean pop to retest this resistance and use it as a support. That's for KPLT. You're also in this little case scenario. Uh, in a more microscopic view. Let's do parallel line. So we can run this rising wedge. You're actually getting a false breakout on the top to reject off this resistance. And that's why you're immediately starting to see some more red activity. What you want to see is a continuance back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But if you run up and get a early rejection, right? You run down bounce, get an early rejection around this range. And you didn't run up to test that ascending uh, resistance and then fall down. Expect that bearish result then. 430, not 441. GME is seeming like it's wanting to break past some of these last highs, though. That's KLPT. Let's bring up some of these other ones. PLL, we'll do PLL, then we'll do KNBE. And then we'll also talk about Oracle and PM, but massive long-term rising wedge formation. There's never a timestamp on these, by the way. Uh, these can play out for months. These can play out for weeks. These can play out for two days, and then you can reject into the bearish result. The last rising wedge we had literally went from around 722... It was a month long of bullish activity of higher lows and higher and higher highs. But this is specifically for PLL. It's up 1.5% today. It's been on a nasty bullish trend. What you need to see in the ultimate decider is a break over this resistance at 61. You're pinching yourself as close as you can pinch yourself right now for PLL, and you're bound to get a pop above or below. The fact that you're in a rising wedge, I would expect that pop to be below. But don't even worry about that, right? Let's bring it in a wider view of things. Five year, one year. Daily candles. Oh, I mean, long-term view. Let's do it. An even longer-term view than the other long-term view we were looking at. You, you've been getting a lot of rising wedges for PLL. You can make a ton of money during the run-ups, and that's what's beautiful about it. But they almost always end in a bearish result, as you can see. So with this next rising wedge, you're bound to fall again, and you're kind of making this little formation. Pinching yourself in a longer-term wedge. Expect that rejection off of the resistance. If you don't get it, it's a clean breakout. If you do, you could still run down to this long-term support to continue bouncing back and forth. Looking good for PLL, though. Just give it a little bit of time to make its rhyme. Okay, NBE next. Okay, so and this is a different wedge case scenario, triangle formation. You're kind of pinching yourself into this little range. After a falling wedge, you should expect a bullish result. You ended up getting that, and now you're pinching yourself in this range. You've already tested the resistance twice. You've been riding the support, so you're obviously abiding by both case scenarios. You need to get a clean pop one way or another. That's pretty much it, though. I mean, short-term price action, I could break it down into the hourly charts, and you can see you're in a pretty strong push right now. You should expect that rejection and should expect a run down afterwards. Try to catch support at around this range at $25 flat. Uh, resistance being used as a support. But if you don't get it, just expect to bounce on this ascending support. KNBE, we did PLL Oracle next. Let's run it, man. Give me some stocks to look at. Do you guys have any stocks you love and you want me to give you a general direction of what's happening next? Parallel line. Okay. Uh, you should be expecting a bearish result. And what's to give you a general image, you just got a double top formation. It is in a two hour candle. So if you break it into a four hour view, you can see it's more playing out as of right now. You don't want to fall down to this neckline. If that ends up happening, at least you were prepared for it. But you want to get that higher low next. You want to continue on an ascending trend like this in a more short term view. So you can pinch yourself in a wedge. But if you run down to fall under this ascending support, understand you're probably going to play out a double top formation to retest this long term rising wedge support. Uh, it's been kind of tracking this stock price for a very long time, too, in the more macroscopic view of things. Looking good, man. Kind of tracking, Oracle's just been tracking this for a while. You've got a swoop under, a swoop under. I mean, a swoop under, a swoop over. So. Probably expect some sort of rundown to catch yourself at some point back into this trend. It's looking crazy. That's Oracle, though. PM. Oh, my goodness. See, this is a very rare occurrence when you're in a rising wedge and it pops above the ascending resistance to use it as an ascending support. Of course, in all totality, this could be the top up here for the rising wedge. You know, something like this.
and you could just be slowly but surely running to test that resistance. But in the more microscopic view, you can see that you're currently in this little short-term formation, a rising wedge, bouncing back and forth over and over again. You got a clean break above the resistance and now you're now using it as an ascending support. Stuff like this really doesn't last for long. Uh, for PM, it's kind of just on a more volatile push, but it's expecting a rundown at some point. You got a clean break over these resistances in your way too. Let's delete these. So what's your next point that you really need to break over for PM in a long-term view? You got a clean run up to there. Oh, so you're already pushing that. Support maybe right here. Your close resistance being this range, which gives you a lot of room to grow. I mean, it's a 106 to 109. Since it's an expensive stock, it's probably, probably not that much based off a of percentage, but... If you're really going to start a bullish trend, you just broke over that last high as well today. You could push up to test some of these higher ranges. PM looking good, man. Yeah. <laughs> Baby Ruthie, I'm seeing your chat. Look in Camden's Discord at my chat room and take a look. There's some more money in there. G facts. What did I miss? What did I? Oh, did I win? Baby Ruthie, you won. You won. Give me your Venmo. Give me your PayPal. Give me your, give me your cash app. Whatever it is. But I'm about to send you $42 haulers, man. Let's check it. You were this close to losing, baby Ruthie. And the only reason I'm comfortable with saying that is because you just won. Either way, BBIG went, came from second to last to first destroyed Tilray. And then over time, you can see when it... Oh, man, I messed it up again. Got to go back to the Monday. Okay. Let me go back to the Monday. There we go. So you can see with uh, BBIG in second to last running up to first, it slowly but surely made more consolidation towards the end of the day until Ray held its price. So yes, you did win, baby Ruthie. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Let's go. Hey, the non-financial advisor is a hundred facts. Appreciate you, dog. Because he decides to not show his revenue next, re next report. Because he decides to not show his revenue next report. That's not a good thing, though. It's not. A, I mean, it could be a good thing under the scenes, but... As, a, as an investor in a company, you should know what's to happen next or at least be shown transparency from, your, from the board of members. Either way, though, who knows what they're doing behind the scenes. I don't know anything about that stock, so I don't have any room to talk about it. KPLT, though. Cornier says, can I pick my stock, bro? Yes, let's do it. Let's do it. It's time. Usually wait until 445, but... Also, I can't find the wheel of instructions anywhere. Oh, the wheel of shrewdness instructions anywhere. Do I just use the PayPal donate button and pick my and just list my pick there? Oh, you just you send me two dollars, whether it be through uh, PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, YouTube donation. Understand that I'm not keeping any of it, and it just goes into a pool. But you're right about that. There isn't. There does need to be some sort of um, like when you come into this channel, there, there needs to be some sort of a description on what to do with it. I'm gonna pick no cap in stock if I get called first. <laughs> Uh, but go ahead and send the money to be included on the wheel. Facts. I told him calls your name to pick. Um, it's it's this right here. So you're pay, you're basically paying me two dollars to be entered into this. So Crystal, you pay me two dollars. You get put in right here. We spin. If your name gets picked first, you get to pick your stock. And just like that, you're out. You have your stock. It's being add. It's going to be added into the new weekly trend. And you just we just track it for the week. If your stock does the best throughout the week, you get the whole entire pool. She, sassy Ruth, we, we're going to fight. She'd be cheating. <laughs> hey, baby Ruthie, let me know. If you want to Discord me, if you want to shoot me an email or something like that, regardless, you could put your link down in the chat below and I'll still, I'll still click on it to send you your money. Either way, there's $42 with your name on it, baby Ruthie, and I need to know what to send it to. Sassy Ruthie, we're going to fight. Hey, brother, I appreciate everything you do. Thank you. Lamanu, 99, my dog. You didn't have to do it, but I appreciate everything you do too, dog, for real. Lee Manu, if you're not subscribed, which you probably are, you should hit that subscribe button. You'll be part of the Shrew Gang, whether you like it or not. Shrew Gang. FFIE, let's check it out, Cordero. If you're not watching, if you haven't liked the stream too, help a G out, man. Help a brother out. BB brother. There's 19 people watching, 14 likes. Let's run it, man. FFIE, so this is what you're looking at right now. You got a resistance up here you rejected off of it twice today which is good because you could have gotten a double bottom into the deepest trenches of hell but luckily you got that last rejection minutes literally two minutes before market closed so you started to see some red down candles the vwap line as soon as after market hit shot to test that price action and you started reusing it as a resistance after market still wanting to hug around it though let's do a more wider view though okay so ffie 
It seems like you're just in this long-term formation of a consolidation bounce, a, resist, a support line being used as a resistance. You want to get a clean break above this. Is there any more tests? Oh, yeah, there is. You're testing a long-term resistance, uh, an extremely long-term resistance. You, you're in a deep demand zone too. So anybody buying the stock right now gets, is getting it at a general discount in the long-term view of things. In the, in the long-term view of things, my bad. But up 10% today, got a nasty little rip. It seems like uh, volume did pick up as well. Let's bring the volume over. Yeah, massive rip today on volume. A couple days ago when you touched the deepest into the demand zone you've ever been in the history of FFIE at $9.30, there was a massive influx of bullish volume. Since then, you've just been going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Another massive push of some bullish volume just to test this resistance. FFIE looking like it's about to take that next leg up, but you should expect some consolidation after this, after that rip. Crystal says, ah, oh, so we're doing the spin today. Yes, it's fun Friday. <laughs> yeah. It's fun Friday. We spin, we spin every Friday and then we also get the results every Friday. So it's like winner picked every Friday. You start the new week every Friday. So Friday is just basically the wheel of shrewdness day. It's not even the one I'm going to pick. That's my long-term stock. Cordero playing chess right now. Why is my phone just going ham? Donation, uh, service of donation received. Was that you, Crystal? I think it was you. It's actually doing a reversal right now. Yeah, it looks like it's about to take that reversal, 100%. Let's, let's bring moving averages too, just to, just to prove even stronger that it's taking a massive turnaround. You can see golden cross in all aspects. Now you're deep in a, deep in a bullish trend, long-term, medium-term, and short-term. Are y'all ready to say the rhyme, to do the time on the time? I think it's about that time. Oh my goodness, dude. <laughs> I'm jacked. My, my coffee is so cold, man. All right, let's bring it over. And who, whoever just sent me a $2 donation, let me know so I can add you to the wheel real quick. But I got it. Got it on PayPal, whoever it was. Thank you, by the way, even though it doesn't come to me. It goes straight to the pool, but still, thank you for participating. Food games. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, what's Crystal Bet? Let's do it. Let's run it. Do you have your stock picked already? Pick your stock that you think would win, but don't tell me yet until your name gets picked. Uh, who did the donation for the wheel? <laughs> Twas I. It says Laura. It says Laura did it. Laura Fantasia. Probably shouldn't, yeah, probably shouldn't say first and last names though. Camden Mullahan, Camden Mullahan, Camden Mullahan. <laughs> it was Crystal, you bet. Let's do it. Let's run it. It's time. Let's do it. Oh my goodness. Oh my God. Wait, I don't even know what stock I want. Oh, thank gosh. Thank gosh. We got Gij Medina, who is probably not here at the moment. <laughs> I think she was a. I think she or he was a new person that came in a few a few days ago and was like, "Hell yeah, I want to be a part of the wheel of shrewdness." So they sent me a two dollar hauler, but I'm just gonna write them down so I can put it in the Discord. Whoever missed it today, I'll just remind them in the Discord. They have until Monday, pre market. <laughs> they have until pre market. Yeah, not picking that one. Came the Mullahan, came the Mullahan, came the Mullahan. Gij Medina, Gij Medina. So we're going to write you down, Gij Medina, if you're not here. You were first pick, so you got firsties, man. Regardless, and sadly, you're not going to get firsties. No, it's time to say the rhyme. <laughs> oh, Crystal says no. Sh oh. oh, Crystal, I'm sorry. I don't. Th I don't think anybody's gonna do anything with that. And even if they were, they wouldn't. They weren't gonna do it until. And I mean, until you said sh <laughs> and no, bro. Either the, either way though, Southern Red Lori, pick your stop. Pick your stop for the wheel of shrewdness. 
I'm sorry, Crystal. That uh, that won't happen again. She's probably in her business deal. You, de I, I deleted it from the wheel. Oh, I did. Not Gish Medina's. Thank you for that pop. Eight. That's eyes of a oh I, AMC. Oh. Ho, 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 ho. <laughs> Lori, you don't even know what you just did. <laughs> Lori, Lori, Lori. That was Chad's pick. That was Chad's pick. He said, hey, I can't make it today, but just know if my name gets picked that... Here, Crystal, I'm sorry about that. I'll put you back. But just understand... But he was like, just understand if, um, if I get picked and I'm out there, I want AMC. Crystal says... So I got... Docs for nothing. What are you talking about, Crystal? It was an accident. I'm cutting up strawberries listening for my name to be called, says Borna Bodum. I'm cutting up strawberries listening for my name to be called. Oh, it's me! <laughs> Crystal says, I mean, these get saved on your channel. Um, yeah, I mean, you're... There's 15 people watching right now, Crystal. And understand that all of them are probably moderators. All of us here go on a first and last name basis too, but I didn't know. I didn't know you. You, you said, yeah, it was an accident. I mean, you did tell me who donated it, so I answered. You said, "Twas I." Uh, who did for? Uh, who did the donation for the wheel? And I was like, "Oh, okay." I'm cutting up strawberries, listening for my name to be called. <laughs> I don't even know what I want, man. Too bad for Chad, that's my pick. My real name is permanently recorded on your video. Crystal, take a, calm down for a second, please. As much as I love you, you have to understand that there's 15 people watching right now. I have six to, I have six months of videos worth of two hour, three hour long streams. Nobody's gonna come into this certain stream to find out who Crystal Kanashi is. Um, nobody even comes into my stream to dox me and I have my name first, I have a first and last name basis on every single thing that I do. Um, I love you to death, but you got to understand that it's all, it's all going to be fine. Too bad for Chad. That's my pick. I think I got mine. It's going to be big commerce again. How could I do it? Unfortunately, I am going to do it. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That's right. Papa ape. Wow. All right, we got Pepe up next. Yes, but if you blow up, though, and start being a million of you YouTuber, literally anyone can rewatch this. I understand where you're coming from. I understand where you're coming from. It was an accident, and it won't happen again. Pepe, give me your stock pick. I mean, there's nothing, much, there's nothing much I can do other than end the stream, delete the whole entire stream, and start again. But I'm going to tell you right now, Crystal, that you should be 99.9% .9 fine. And if anything happens, then I'll take, I'll take a low blow for it. But as of right now, it's too, a little too premature. Lulu, bet. Let's run it. Lulu Lemons. <laughs> Lulu Lemons? Is that what it is? Or is, isn't that a yoga brand? A yoga, a yoga pants brand? Pop 8 feeling different right now. We got Crystal Kanashi in the chat. What's your stock pick, Crystal? Dang, just like that, there's only five people left. One, two, three, four, five. So Louis Pardo was speaking facts too a couple days ago. He was talking about how there should be like party music behind the scenes playing. <laughs> exactly. That's the whole point of it, Born Bodum. Like, that's what I want to say, but I'm not trying to be rude. The, like, it could have just been like that. It was an accident. But the more we talk about it, the more people are going to want to just like pay attention to it. I really don't want to wait until something does happen though. You're going to be fine, Crystal. Nothing's going to happen to you. Oh, Papa Ape, no, I didn't want to do that. 
It's just not, it, it's not a big deal, Crystal. You're the, okay, MVIS. Just, it's only a big deal if you're making it a big deal. MVIS, that's actually a good pick, Crystal. Good pick, good pick. We'll take you out. Let's go ahead and run it. Oh, God, who's it going to be? Oh, my goodness. All right, Supervisor Chad, unfortunately. Unfortunately, Supervisor Chad is probably going to have to stick with Hood. Let's, uh, I think he picked Hood, right? Lori, I think. I think that's what he picked, right? I don't know. I think I'll put him down for Hood. <laughs> imagine, how bad, imagine how mad he would be if he comes back on Monday and, his, and, he's, and the stock we're tracking for him is Hood. I would laugh. Cordero in the chat. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Cordero, what's that stock? I have a feeling I already know what it is. But let us know. Nothing really too crazy going on in the aftermarket other than GME on still making these ascending, st still making on this, it's still on this ascending trend. Uh, resistance as a, or, uh, resistance at around this range. You made it over that aftermarket high at around 203.17 and you're only testing cents above. Uh, ex expect a rejection still. <laughs> I can just see my face. I do make some weird faces, man. I can't help it. It's just how it is. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Cordero, no capping. Missing his chance, man. It's been it's going smoothly these last couple of weeks. Either way, we only have once again bought more BB David Shen speaking facts in the chat, my dog. <laughs> the last winner, baby Ruthie. Baby Ruthie. Pick your stock. I don't know. Every week she tends to be almost one of the first ones, dog. I'm gonna lie. Don't pick mine, Cordero. GME. Oh my goodness. That's gonna be neck to neck. Oh, pause. Neck to neck between Lori and Cordero. Pop Ape says David Shin. This is the way. This is the way. This is the... where did that go, by the way? I feel like a long time ago, everybody said this is the way. This is the way. I don't see that any anymore nowadays. Just buying on all the red days, says David. Hey, you're the um, you're the addition to bounces. Know that, David Shin. You're the addition to catching supports and getting a reversal afterwards. Nice to see you, David Shin, though, for real, dog, always. Either way, though, we need some sort of catalyst. Baby Ruthie says, so fi, so fi. So fi, so fly. Oh, gosh. Save the best for last. <laughs> Born about him. I'm calling it. Yes, yes. Wait, no, never mind. You see, sometimes I don't play off what I said before. Born about him, you're still the best. Uh, I, I was saying save the best for last for the last two. Regardless, pick your stock, Born about him. Show us what you're made of. <laughs> Born about him speaks facts, man. He says everybody's going all out now. The first week was like more of a fun week. Everybody's like picking stocks that they think could push. Nobody really didn't want to pick AMC because it's like it wouldn't be fair compared to all of the other minuscule penny stocks that some of us picked. But nowadays, it's ruthless. We want this pool, dog. <laughs> you got GME and AMC. That's crazy. He doesn't pay attention to us. He's too big for us. GME, damn, read the chat. I think it's that. I think it's the delay. I think it's the delay. It's a little bit more heftier than usual today. <laughs> Jimmy, damn, read the chat. We're going all out on the wheel. I'm starting to realize that now. Uh, pick your stock, pick your stocky wacky in the pocky. I think just like that, it's Louis Pardo. Oh my goodness, no way. MMAT, okay, okay. Wow, that was an awesome pick. I should have picked that. <laughs> Y'all are typing so fast. I feel like it's me.
No way! Yes. And we got Louis Pardo, last but not least, in the chat. Uh, if he's not here, I'll just wait until he picks his stock. Either way, if you are here, Louis, pick that stock, man. Last but not least, it's you. So let's go ahead and just draw this in real quick. You said, how much did Sundial go up on week one? Um, was Sundial picked week one? Oh, yeah, it was. Okay. So week one, you closed on Friday. Sundial was up 8% for the week. 8.6% for the week. Almost every other stock was red. It's pretty crazy, though. I think it's time to say the rhyme, man. Goodbye all to all you stocks. Baby Ruthie was the winner of last week's a $42 pool. And now she gets to claim all profits. All that, all those dollar haulers. You're going to blame it on the delay? I am so not proud of you. <laughs> it, it's the truth. Last, Louis, last two weeks in a row, you are cursed. He's probably going to pick Nokia, though. I mean, last two weeks, he's always like, Louis, last two weeks in a row, are you cursed? Are you saying that to me? I'm confused. I don't know. Regardless, let's put him down. Charlie Brown in the Billy Bound downtown. We got AMC for Lori. So let's bring that up. We're going to start comparing this to uh, Big Commerce. Hopefully, show some big movements, right? Right? Please, say, yeah, please say right. We got Lululemons. Oh, it actually is Lululemon. I was saying that as a joke. I think I'm not doing this right. Same percentage scale. Yeah, there we go. Same percentage scale. MVIS for Crystal. We got Supervisor Chad. We got Cordero, GME. I, I wonder which one's already going to be winning, though. So far for Baby Ruthie. So fly, so fly, so fly. And then MMAT. So the only ones that need to pick their stocks is going to be Chad. It's going to be Louis Pardo, and it's going to be Gij Medina. Oh, thanks, Camden. Oh, okay, thanks. Camden, week one up 8%. Baby Ruthie, week two up 4%. Oh, wow, that's insane to think about. <laughs> I understand weed will do all that to you sometimes. <laughs> hey, at least you can see through the BS, Cordero. At least you can see through the BS. Regardless, let's go ahead and run it real quick. Bring it into a Monday standpoint. Or oh, it's Friday. So we're not going to be able to look at these in a healthy view up until Monday when it comes around. Pre-market, uh, it should be in totality the best to look at because it's going to be them starting off on the races. Like you blow the whistle, they shoot the gun in the air, and they all start running. But I'll, I'll give midday recaps always, geez. You got that, dog. Oh, no, I'm asking Louis if he's cursed. <laughs> I thought you were like, he's picked the same thing for the last two weeks. Are you cursed? And I was going to say yes. But I don't think Louis cursed. He could be. Maybe ripping or tanking next Tuesday, Cam. Let's check it out on the big screen, yo. I think it's time to start bringing the big screen back. Oh, my God. That looks terrible. <laughs> okay. So this is what I'm rocking with as of right now. In a microscopic view, okay? Bear with me and hear me out real quick for BB. You can see in this parallel line, we're going to go touch to top to top, see if there's anything whatsoever to touch bottom to bottom. And I don't see it, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. As of right now, you're kind of entering yourself into a volatile descending trend, and you only get three tests. That's it. So what am I going to do? I'm probably just going to do a ray for now. Yeah, something like this. You're only getting three tests on this trend line for a descending resistance. You're going to continue to ride this until you catch support. Now, we do have this ascending support as of right here, and it seems like you you're tested it today perfectly. Got the bounce. You tested it twice. You're even testing in the aftermarket. You just really don't want to fall under 11. Even if you do fall under 11, you still have this ultimatum support at around 1090 to catch. Unfortunately, we've taken two days of red activity. Unfortunately, it's uh, been so hefty to the point where it's destroyed any type of bullish activity for the past two days. But if you take it at face value, our first little consolidation we had was a rundown from up at this high point down to here. And we're getting just the only type of consolidation afterwards, a run up from here to here. It's almost the same exact retracement too, which is pretty nuts to me. Oh, that is interesting. To the rundown. You run it back up to the tippy top of here, to the rundown. Oh, never mind. I didn't do it exact. 
you got close, but you're bouncing around the same level. You're getting almost the same level of consolidation as well. You're just getting, uh, you're, you have to fall before you get a next leg up. Unfortunately, it's a little bit more volatile than it was before, but you see, you get that clean break. The continuation of bullish volume is there. You're getting bullish divergences as in the RSI is rising the slightest bit. People aren't letting it get oversold. So the dip is being bought, but you're getting downwards pressure in the price movements. It shouldn't play out that way. And when it does play out that way, it's a bullish divergence. People are buying the dip, but the stock market is kind of just like low. I mean, but the stock is just like loading up, picking up a bunch of dry powder until you get a result of a bullish or bearish pop. What do I expect on Tuesday? Um, I think I feel like I would expect the green in all totality, but that's what I hope for. I mean, that's what I hope for. Yeah, that's what I hope for. That's what I want to want to. It's what I want to happen. Oh my goodness! But and so all totality, you should expect red. We still have a little bit of room to fall to 1090, and if we can drop that far, if we have to drop that far, then you should definitely expect that to happen. Definitely see through the BS if it does happen, and know that it's just healthy price movements. Up and down, up and down, up and down. You were in this rising wedge too, so a bearish result was bound to happen, and you still haven't you still haven't popped below it. You got the clean test on top, clean test on bottom. So I'm looking for a breakout to retest this top again. I think Chad should pick BBIG. <laughs> uh, Baby Ruthie says, "I don't, I don't smoke weed. I don't, yeah, that's it, that has to, that sounds like a song, Baby Ruthie. I think Baby Ruthie's just singing." Thought I'd gone deaf. Couldn't hear your stream. Look down to see my cans on the desk. Look down to see my cans on the desk. Right over my head, dog. <laughs> I don't even know. If you make it, if you don't make it to pick your stock, the rule is we pick it for them. That would be crazy. I do need to let Chad know though. Be like, yo, your stock got picked, man. Wait, weren't you, weren't you first last week, uh, Lori? Oh, never mind, you were second this week. Maybe even third. Yeah. <laughs> Chad's going to be punched in the air. Either way, this, that's what I have playing out for BB on, on Tuesday. I really want it to be green. You should be expecting a breakout, but we have still room to fall to 1090. It was, in, it was pretty reassuring, actually, to see vibrations and bounces at these higher ranges at 11 flat. Um... But with max pain for puts being at 1050, max pain for calls this week being at 1150, and only a dollar difference between max pain, it's pretty interesting to see that we closed flat at $11. For AMC as well, max pain this week for call options being $45, max pain for puts this week being $43. It's pretty interesting to see that we closed flat at $44. And it is interesting because it's happened for the past three weeks. So we can definitely see through it over here at the Shrewd Gang. It's just frustrating, and it's like, when will it stop? It's, there's no, there's not even any point of doing TA if you under, if the stock is just going to move based off of the options market. Cans equals headphones. Oh, okay. Cans equals headphones. I've never heard of that before. <laughs> Dude, that, 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 that's like me waking up in the morning and like I can barely see and I can't take a step without almost falling over because I'm just so tired, right? Um, you get your cereal and then you put the cereal in the fridge or you get your cereal and you put it in the cup drawer. Happens all the time with me. You put your Gatorade in the cup drawer. You put your Gatorade in the freezer. You put your Gatorade in the microwave. Hook me up too, Ruthie. I'm going to need a script. I'm a nurse, remember? Oh. Uh. Oh, snap. Sometimes you got that money. You just, sometimes you got to get that money by any means necessary. But since you said can. But since you said, can I? <laughs> hey, she's going to need a script. Facts. Are you able to sell that legally though? Where, where you're currently staying at? We got Crystal saying, hmm, all right. How about, all right, how about you can have my email and the receipt? If you win, you can send it to me even if I disappear, yes? You're gonna disappear on us? No. I mean, Crystal, you do you, man. As much as I would love for you to stay here, um, stuff, accidents do happen. Accidents happen. Uh, people learn from it. So You can't help being so young. <laughs> I mean, if that's what you want, Crystal, of course, I'll do that for you. But 
I don't think I'm. I don't think your name, your real name, is ever gonna be said again. AMC support under here at the VWAP line currently just vibrating back and forth. Doesn't really know where it really wants to go next. As you can see, resistance up at this range. You can see support down at this range. You're really about to push one way or another, but with let's look at the limit orders in the aftermarket and zoom down a little bit. Basing off of just the order book alone, you can see that there is more buy orders and sell orders, but you would have to fall down to 4380, which is all the way down here, 43. Oh man, that's a long ways to go. So the only buy orders we currently have that's, that are heftied up are down here at this range at 14, uh, 4380. So that's a long way to fall. If we want some buy orders to be filled, unfortunately we may fall down that low to get the buy orders filled, but uh, basing off of the ones near the ask price and the bid price, there's really nothing whatsoever other than more sell orders than buy orders. That's pretty much it. I'm not, I'm not looking to feel, make you feel bad. Like I do get it was an accident. No, I got you. It's just like, like nobody's even thinking about it. Like nobody, like nobody's even thinking about it. Um, it's probably been 30 minutes since it's even happened. So it's already long gone in people's brains. But if you're worried about a month from now, a year from now, two years from now, something like that, where I have like maybe a million subscribers and someone hops in to st and, and they hear your name, they're like, oh, who's that? Who's that um, person randomly in the Shrew Gang live stream? Let me look up their first name and last name and let me dox them. <laughs> no, man, it doesn't work like that. I, I I appreciate you, Crystal. I appreciate you for real. ABCL, all, the other stock I love for long term. Long term. <laughs> Xavier, La Roche in the chat. ABCL, I've never heard of this. The only ones I th that I think about alphabet wise, ABC, it's going to be Goo Goo Gaga because you have alphabet A, you have alphabet B. Do you have alphabet C? Yeah, there's alphabet A that I was just looking at. Oh, never mind. That's alpha A that I'm thinking about. What? What are you talking about, Willis? Either way, let's go over alpha or A, B, C, L on the long-term view of things. Bring it over in the big screen too. A, B, C, L. Man. First of all, man... I I would try to stay away from this as much as possible. The only good thing that, that you need to think about is when it became publicly traded as an IPO, it made immediately, the first day of it being an even, even publicly traded as, as a stock, almost the first day, it made that ultimatum resistance, which is nuts. And it most likely means that there's insiders or there's people behind the scenes that dump the stock as soon as it became publicly traded. Who does it sound like? It sounds like Robin Hood, okay? So you get a massive rundown. You've already made that ultimatum resistance at 71. Where's your next support? Uh, people are like, that's the ultimatum support. They buy it up, it runs up, long-term holders start seeing the run back down and you just reject into lower ranges. You've not found that demand zone once until you got into 1451. I mean, a couple times you did get vibrations here and there. This is the long-term view of things. So you could get a, have gotten a massive push, 37 to 50. But from the long-term view of things, you just have been dying into a massive falling wedge formation. Let's do this real quick. Seems like you just now got a technical breakout too, but I don't know if I like the descending support. Hmm. Maybe I do though. Catching support early. Let's let's go break it down to the two hours moving averages to get in a more microscopic view. So you got that fat turnaround. You caught support down at this lowest range possible, 1414. You didn't test it once. You tested it twice in the past, and you got that clean pop above. The only thing you wanted to see, which is probably the first time you've seen it in a very long time. Let's go into the four hours. I mean, you're just constantly rejecting off the 200 MA. Your 200 MA is the overall resistance that you've been using for the longest time. Now what you see recently is an intertwining of all the moving averages, a fat rip above all of the moving averages, and now that 200 MA is your ultimatum support, while your 50 MA is your closest support, and then your 100 MA is like the medium term, um, it, it just tracks medium term price movements. So 200 long term, 100 medium term, 50 short term. With, with all of these form, forming like this, a nice little golden cross formation, it's just pretty much setting yourself up for a massive bullish trend. Now, what you do need to pay attention to is that you just got a clean break over this last resistance. So one, you need to use this as a support or two, you need to retrace down to some lower levels, uh, low point to the high point. You'd want to at least test 1780 as a bounce. Let me put a line here or maybe the even a bullish bounce at 61.8. Know this though, if you do reject and you start testing the lower ranges under those supports, you're most likely gonna see another long-term rundown, just mimicking every single bullish run-up you've had in the past. 
hmm, you know what? Maybe I'm going to do this. I like it. I like the, I like the falling wedge more on this view. Parallel line. Touch green to green. It looks more like it. Uh, you you got to break above it slowly but surely. It's more of like an under the radar type breakout, but you don't getting any, you're not getting any bullish volume to follow it to push it up to the moon. I mean, a seven percent day is a nice day for a breakout, but there's a lot of growth potential when it comes to the stock in the long term view. MVIS. My my average is eighteen sixty. Says Xavier, no way. Let me check that out again, real quick. ABCL. 1860. Oh, you're chilling, man. Mm, maybe. Just know that you should have dry powder left over if you do get a little bit of consolidation and buy that dip. Expect some consolidation after a rip like that. It seems like you are getting it on the daily candle, but you want to make sure you can get a day of some red following after to get that true support bounce, consolidation bounce, bounce to show strength in that next leg up. Uh, baby Ruthie, I'm going to go to volleyball. I'm going to go to a guy's volleyball game and a few and then a football game after. <laughs> Y'all have a great MFM weekend. Hey, you too, baby Ruthie. Enjoy yourself, for real. Understand that on Tuesday. Oh, I was going to say Monday. Let's be with the hedgies. <laughs> on Tuesday, the stock market will be right back here for you. On Tuesday, we'll be right back here for you. <laughs> uh, enjoy yourself. Put your feet up. Uh, do things that get you out of your comfort zone so you can have a good time this weekend. For real, for real. Clownfish, let's give look at MMAT. Let's run it. I did a video on MMAT not, MMAT not too long ago telling everybody to expect red. <laughs> and then it just ripped to the freaking moon. Long-term view of things. You had this like weird looking. Let's go to the five years. Nope. One year. Okay. All right, word. Something like this, right? So you were, this is what I was looking at yesterday. Exactly. I was expecting a run down. You were in a falling wedge formation. You got a fat rip up. And then guess what? I made a nice little descending resistance touching the top to the next red candle that we had. And then it seems like uh, without any further ado, as soon as that aftermarket hit, it just ripped to the freaking moon again. And not only did it rip higher, it also broke above this last high with some price action. Now that just shows that there is growth potential ahead. You're about to get this next leg up, but it's a matter of where you're going to get this next leg up. And know that tomorrow, or my bad, Tuesday or Wednesday or something like that, buyers could leave in mass amounts. There could be a huge sell-off, and it could change any any sort of trajectory that was pointing it towards this direction. Uh, but from the looks of it now, I mean, you're just entering yourself into a more massive rising wedge. You have a you have an ascending support, so we have to also make an ascending resistance. It's a little premature, I know. But there we go, testing high to high. And you can see how it's going to end up playing out. You want to get a run down the test close to this range, get a nice little pop, and then it can run back up to the top. But for MMAT, you have to give your trends time to play out. The consolidation I would like to see basing off a of TA should test around the $5 range. But you could also just bounce anywhere off this ascending support and get that. Nope. Yeah, I'm hard-headed. <laughs> I knew it. Nokia. Louis Pardo, what's up, my dog? I see my G. I'll put you in real quick. Just know you're not the only one. Really. I was thinking about picking Nokia this week too, but I don't even know if that would have been fair. And I don't think that, I don't think I could have done that, that to you in any case scenario. So Nokia corporated corporation sponsored. Is that really what is that really what it's called on the New York Stock Exchange? What? You've got to be kidding me. Oh, I just changed that stock. Is AMC still up? Okay, there we go. I got it. Perfect. So this is what you're going to be rocking with. This is Friday aftermarket as of right now. So Monday is going to is going to open. Oh, Tuesday. Damn, you hate to see it, but Tuesday is going to open as soon as this green bar, as soon as this gray bar ends up getting passed, and it's going to be the horses off to the races, man. A nice twenty dollar pull this week too. Oh, baby Ruthie, before you go. Oh, damn, man. Before you go, you have a $42 pool that has your name on it. <laughs> Don't you want your dollar hollers? Get that W. Louis, Louis the Cursed. What's your stock pick? No, okay, I'm hard-headed. Hello, sir. We got Naraj Patel in the chat. Sorry, I meant to say hello, ma'am. Naraj, um... 
Arash Patel? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, ma'am. I didn't mean to. Yeah, I mean, you do kind of look like a girl in your thing, but um, I'm sorry if I messed that up. <laughs> got your ass, boy. I ain't no ma'am out here, dog. You got to know that. But how did you feel in that point two, point three, maybe maybe one, one full second to where I just misgendered you? Does it make you want to punch the air? Does it make you want to do crazy things that is outlandish and makes you crazy? <laughs> I don't even know. IRT, IRNT up 185% after our NASCAR all out, throwing some bangers in the chat. IRNT. Every time he comes in, he always has one that's ripping currently. So this is what you want to pay attention to. You're on an ascending support, which is good in all case scenarios. You are setting yourself up for consolidation, so you got to be able to see through it. Let's touch red to red, and as of right now, this is what you're rocking with. Uh, that was a really quick ascending resistance, so I don't know if I like that. Just touch red to red for now. Ray. Who's Ray? I don't know. There we go. So consolidation could fall down to this range. If you do want to retrace it in all, in all totality, you can. This last rip went up to there, so Fibonacci retracement. It could catch itself earlier if it retraces to the 61.8% and bounces, but from the looks of it, you're probably going to run back down to test these lower ranges. Either way, uh, you said IRT up 185% after hours. Let's check it real quick. So after hours, it's looking decent. Nasty old nasty rip. Look at the trend line, what it looks like in the aftermarket. It is a pretty new stock, it seems. Yeah. January, February, March. So it came out March of 2020. It's been available for about a, two years now. Over, or my bad, over a year now. So your ultimatum resistance was right here. Your ultimatum support was down here at around this range of 850. As soon as you became publicly traded as an IPO, you already found that support in your run-up. That shows that they have a good board of members. That shows whoever's back, if it's a chief lawyer or whatever it is uh, on the board of members for IRNT, it just shows that they care about their shareholders. Um, it's not something that just becomes publicly traded like Hood or any other stock, and they just dump it on their own shareholders so they can make a little bit of bread. You see IRNT immediately making that ultimatum support and never seeing it ever again um, the day it opened. You get a nice little push afterwards, and then you finally make that consolidation bounce in the long-term view at $9.30. And then since then, you've just been ripping and not stopping. What you need to pay attention to is bringing on like the daily charts or something like that. You have to be in some sort of trend. Even if you're ripping to the flipping moon, you have to be in some sort of trend. $18.50 is where you're at right now. No freaking way. You're up to $40 in the aftermarket. There's no trend to play this out other than probably a technical breakout. The ultimatum resistance was 1857. So the fact that you probably broke over that, what happened in the aftermarket? 1857. Oh yeah. You were suffocated even through the intraday throughout this time. You ran up to 1857 and that was your textbook rejection. That's pretty crazy, but ran back up to test it after market. As soon as you got that clean rip, it seems like there was buyers just waiting on that confirmation. As soon as that confirmation was hit, it was a pretty massive, uh, it was pretty massive volume, even in the aftermarket getting pushed through the stock. Looking like It's looking like it's wanting to retrace to the 61.8% and it's seeming like it wants to take a bounce now. If it doesn't end up happening, you still have that uh, comfort, that blanket um, at around these ascending support at these lower ranges. But 61.8% seemed like it's being abided by so far. Nokia, Nokia is an ADR. I thought it was, um, I mean, what is, is it really though? That's pretty, that's pretty interesting. I was thinking about the industry. It's like network solutions, fiber solutions. Is a, re is a recent SPAC merger with high redemption rates, similar to BLUW and LWAC. B L U W and A and A L U C L W A C. Oh my goodness! Talk about a hit though. So these just seem to be pretty volatile. Go well. That's only fourteen to eighteen, so nothing really too crazy. This is B C O R. I know uh, L W A C took a rip there not too long ago, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> Let's go in the daily chart. Four hour chart maybe. Yeah, it's more like it. It was actually yesterday. Yesterday is when it had that nasty rip to nine dollars to thirty-five. Seems like these merger deals are, is what buyers are looking for. And those are spacs, you said? Man, I had a I had some old friends a long time ago uh, when I started this YouTube channel. What? <laughs> but I I had this old friend a long time ago. When, and he was just like the SPAC man. He was the SPAC master. That's all he played was SPACs. 
and he placed him off of mergers and other stuff like that. And his favorite one was SNPR. SNPR. No, it's not even a stock anymore. Oh, that's got to suck. And it's flat at $10. But this was one of his favorites. He made a ton of money off of it, as you can see during the run-up. But it was death afterwards, and you haven't seen the end of it. Turn around and die. All right, I've MVIS up in two different spots, and both of those spots are the spots that I don't need them at. So what am I going to do is, is I'm going to bring the regular stocks back and pull them up. GME currently above the VWAP line. You love to see it. We want to see this continuing being used as a support while that ultimatum resistance is 203.30 in the aftermarket. Uh, AMC is seeming like it's having a little bit of trouble break past the VWAP. Even though it just did, it's wanting to reject and bounce under to close under the VWAP line. Talk about a wishy-washy cap candle. That's exactly what it is, man. MVIS, as you can see, is... Uh, a nice stair-stepping effect, a low testing to the other low would be something like this, a nice volatile push up, but I don't really like it too much. I'm just going to go ahead and let the let MVIS do its thing. It's seeming like it's more choppy than anything. BB, show us what you're made of, man. Let's do this real quick. Aftermarket rising wedge, what? Yes. Expect a bearish result. Probably going to fall right back down to the VWAP line as soon as we made it above. No. IRNT is just fighting, fighting right now to stay up. Hard-headed or true conviction and heart. I go with number two. <laughs> hey, that is true, Born About Him. Louis, Louis, there can only be one, says Highlander. I've never even heard of that. But hard-headed or true conviction and heart. I think Board of Bowman is onto something right now. If you haven't liked the stream, help a G out, man. Run these likes up. It's always slow on Friday, so we got to accept that. But I know there's a couple of you that haven't liked the stream. For real, if I was watching your stream, I would like, I would subscribe. And you wouldn't even have to ask me, man. You already know this, though. IRNT seeming like you're about to take that nice little reversal aftermarket. Let's go ahead and delete this since you already made that support. Uh, we want to see this continue to play out, though. AMC clean pop over the VWAP. VWAP, VWAP. Gaps back and forth. So I would expect a rundown, too. Shh. Show us what you're made of, though. I would rather not a run up, but you got to prepare for that. I mean, I would rather not a run down, <laughs> but you got to prepare for that. Uh, I, B, R, and T is probably going to run up, and it's either going to test this last high or it's going to make a lower high, which is going to set you up for a 50 50 indication. It's probably going to be something like this, right? Testing the top to the bottom at some point, and you're going to be pinching yourself in a 50 50 50 symmetrical triangle bound to push one way or another. It's usually what happens after a massive run up or a massive dump. You get the buyers or sellers in, in the bearish case scenario. Get met with the op with the opposing party, which for a rundown, it would be buyers meeting the sellers. If it was a run up like this, sellers are starting to meet the buyers at higher prices. There's less buyers around these ranges because you're uh, testing these resistances a lot higher than $8 that you were at in the intraday or 15, I guess, but buyers are getting more weary while sellers are starting to load up. And that's why you're starting to see some more red activity. Pinching yourself very strong in between a 50-50 symmetrical triangle, but we want to get a high to at least portray this is going to play out. Luis is right on, right on. Hey, let's go ahead and do some Ortex data real quick. AMC, show us what you're made of. I'm scared, man. I'm scared. Look at that. Oh, I'm shaking up my little boots. <laughs> Psych, you wish I was, because I'm not. Either way, they loaded up today for, for what's to happen tomorrow. Uh, Trade Trades was tracking this bullish trend. And you can see today with today's rundown, we just fell under a short-term bullish trend line. It was only a week long, it seems. Or maybe... A week and a half so far, but you only get you only got two bounces on the ascending support. You went to test it for that third time. You're pretty much just vibrating back and forth, and it's seeming like you got that slow but sure uh, close under the under the uh, ascending support. So you don't want to get any of that jazz. But it ended up playing out. Short sellers are loading up to prepare for a red day on on Tuesday, and that's what they're expecting so far. I didn't know it was that dramatized. It was bad earlier today, but I didn't know it was this uh, this bad. 8.7% doesn't seem like a lot, but this is over 9 million borrowed against AMC. They're at 90% utilization. So somebody's loading up, man. Somebody's loading up, but don't don't get your hopes up. Don't don't lose your, that conviction. Uh, the last time we were able to hold strong when we were at 14, 10, 11 dollars, right before we pushed to that squeeze, we went from 100 million around there to reaching up to 150 million. So a rise in shares on loan just means that they're either chasing the price, they're averaging up, 
or two. They're either greedy as F and they're continuously just bringing a lot of selling pressure into the float of AMC. Either way though, let's go ahead and bring the average age of the shares on loan, 55 days. So it's gonna be one month, it's gonna be 30 days. Two months, it's gonna be 60 days. So it's 60, we just need to go five days back. So we're just gonna go through the week, the first week of July. Okay, okay. So you're testing the ranges of $50, $49 if you will. Uh, with the new short sellers hopping into the float now, it's gonna bring the average age of the shares on loan down. But you can see this is in amounts of days. It's just these shares on loan up here. How long have they been held for? What's the overall average, right? There's a lot picked up today and yesterday, but compared to the overall average being held, they've been held for around 55 days. That's the only way that I can kind of, I don't know, define that. BB, as you can see, is probably gonna be just as bad as AMC. Let's see it. Oh, <clears throat> <laughs> it makes me want to laugh in all totality, but they did just double down. We, we went from 30 million shares on loan to 33.7. It seems to take a little bit of a rundown, but on Tuesday, you should be expecting this to be around 33.6, 33.7 million shares on loan. Just a slight little uptrend. 0.92% in that short interest percentage change is jack squat. Um, that shares on loan note, they're more weary than anything. Let's go ahead and bring the average age of the shares on loan. And you can see that this is at 73 days. Ooh, man. This is where it gets extremely scary for BlackBerry. So 73. One month, two months, 60. Oh, God, man. It's towards the start of June. No, you hate to see it. You really do hate to see it. Definitely not that. I, I need to get it exact. So it's 60. Okay. So we're at 73. Okay. So that's literally this week. It's actually the Friday, but we're going to give them the benefit of the doubt of the highest price throughout this range. I always get these average age wrong too. So it's like, it's like, come on, Camden. 21st of June. Okay. So they're... Oh man, that is so much better, dog. <laughs> I know a couple days ago as well, I made it seem like they were at $10, but sometimes I just get it wrong. It happens. Everybody's human. All right, so 21 days. You can see currently you're pretty much sitting at around $12. Benefit of the doubt, $13 flat. With, with BB having such a hard time, even breaking above $11 flat, without having such a hard time breaking past $12 recently, you can tell that the short sellers are facing a lot of pressure with this bullish run-up. They can't have it continuing to rise because if we get one more dollar, if we get two more dollars of some bullish activity, we've already made them break even. We've already made it to the point where they're going to have to make the decision to cover and return those shares or continue averaging up while the price runs up. So of course they haven't had to make that decision yet for GME, for MVIS. They already have had to make that decision uh, because they're, because you're swamping the short sellers right now. But for AMC and G, for AMC and BB, you're literally like this close, a hair away from just catching the short sellers where it hurts. AMC's case scenario, what was like, it was $50, $52 for BB. We have to catch them at around 14, ooh, $13. I think it was at the highest it was 14. So we just got to get up around that range, start tickling it for AMC. We have to start tickling 50 again to really get around there. We got that loose spice in the chat, my dog. Let's go. Yes, yes. She says, hello, man, Jimmy had a pullback. Can you tell me why? Yes, I can. And why do you think Ethereum, and, and when do you think Ethereum is going to consolidate? Is it ripping right now? I just went long on, uh, Bitcoin, uh, on Bitcoin not too long ago. It seemed to be down in, my, uh, down in my position. But I just placed it. Boy, I just placed it, mate. Let's, let's run it. Oh, MVIS. As soon as I started talking good about you. Show us what you're made of. So I'm going to break up Ethereum for you. Uh, it was ripping yesterday too. I had a, I had a couple people yesterday asking me um, if it's going to make a next leg up. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's on its way to make a next leg up. It might be a short-term next leg up. It might be a long-term next leg up. But it's in the formation of getting a bullish pop, even in the TSI chart. Let me do this for you. I'll talk about Ethereum first. Uh, it gets a little wonky on this real quick. So I think I might bring it to the original sometimes too. That's an hourly chart. So you are in a massive rising wedge formation. You should expect a bearish result soon. Ooh, yeah. 
I guess I didn't really take it out into a, more, a longer view of things, but in the short-term view of things, you should expect a nice little pop. Uh, if we take it down real quick, you can see you're getting a, a descending resistance, which means that you're setting yourself up for a breakout. It's just a matter of how long it can play this out for. If you have balls of steel and you can continue to hold throughout this range and you can run and you can hold the stock while it's running down, you could catch it at a bounce. You could also see a bounce down here at around this range for Ethereum because this is where you get three last reje rejections. You want to see this being used as a support. It's a little premature to kind of choose where it's going to go next. You're seeing some short-term consolidation, but long-term you're in a massive rising wedge and you caught that you, you caught that rejection early. If anything, you should have ran up. Where is it? Okay, I'll just do this. Yeah. If anything, you, this last run up, you should have run up to at least test this descending resistance and then run back down to test the support. But the fact that you caught resi a resistance early, you caught that rejection early, it just means you're a little bit more weaker than you should have. There's less buyers than there should have to run, that, to run you back up to this range and you should be expecting a bearish result next. Look at the, look at the BOLL still going crazy. I would love for AMC to tickle the 50s. <laughs> Uh, it's so true. Me too. But that's going to be Ethereum. Um, when, do, when do I think it's going to consolidate? You could still get another bounce on this ascending support. I would wait for the confirmation like that because just know that it's also going to be the confirmation of this as well, of you testing this resi resistance as a support. Uh, you just have two things you want to wait for that confirmation. If you get a breakdown under the ascending support, you would want to see a catch at the next support. If you don't get that, just accept the TA that you're probably going to be a little bit bearish ahead. But when we made our attendees, man, we, we turned $85 into 160 on that bull cycle. That's a lot of percentages off of a low amount of money, though. <laughs> right now I'm born a photo. Facts. Rack tack in the chat, my dog. Nice to see you back. Yes, yes. AITX. Let's check out AITX. Let's do it real quick. So as of right now, NVI is taking on a nice bull trend in the aftermarket. Uh, AMC, let's see if these are reiterating whatsoever. AMC as flat as, a, as, flat, as flat can get. <laughs> You're kind of just vibrating. It's making these one cent higher lows, making this one cent lower lows. I mean, lower highs, my bad. To kind of pinch yourself into max vibration, like one cent back and forth, back and forth. Understand this right now that we are literally hugging $44. Our max pain this week for AMC was 45 and the, for the call options, our max pain this week for the put options was 43. Uh, coincidentally, we closed in between both of those exactly at 44. I don't think so. BB max pain for calls was 1150. Max pain for puts was 1050. Coincidence, we closed 50 cents in between both at 11 flat. I mean, I don't really know. I don't think so, right? I really would not. I would really think that's that, that that's not the case. <laughs> So options market is tying in a lot to our price activity when it comes to the real stock market. So I want to get a nice push. I want to get a nice push, a breakout or something to prove that bullish strength is actually here. Or more of just uh, as 50-50 as 50-50 as gets with short sellers. We want to go and we want to push just as much as short sellers are loading up the boat to get a rundown. Oh, Lori, inner foreplay talk. <laughs> I want to tickle the 50s too. Oh my God, so bad. Lemanu says, so is BB expected to drop more? 10, 1090 would be the ultimatum decider. Um, I would. I thought the reassuring bounce at around eleven dollars today was as reassuring as re, was as reassuring as I would like it to be. But you're kind of abiding by this little trend of rising wedge formation. You're gonna have to pop soon. You're gonna have to bounce soon. But the best case scenario for you to bounce would be now. Worst case scenario could be ten ninety. Uh, even worst case scenario is you could just release and bearish activity, and you could probably expect to see some more bearish moves ahead. But as of right now, dude, I'm bullish AF and I've been bullish on it forever. Think about it. We just now entered. I know it gets disgustingly uh, sloppy, right? I think it's time to just delete everything in the past for BB. Let's look up AITX first and then we'll bring up BB. Mm, so you're in a pretty strong bearish trend, which is good. It's good for now because that's really when you want to start loading up on your favorite stocks. Oh. You're catching support early too, which is good to see. But I could also do this. <laughs> I could also do this if I really wanted to. It's like the most sideways. I don't like that though. Just jokes. Just jokes. Either way, 
it's you're, you're like in a massive falling wedge formation. You just cut that support early once, you cut it early twice, you're trying to run back up to get that bullish pressure, but you're continuously rejecting off the 50 and the 100 MA. They're starting to intertwine. If you pay attention to the slope, you can see that the slope is getting a lot closer than it was when you were back here taking massive swings on price activity. They were a lot farther way back here than they were up here. It just means that there's a lot more buying meeting the selling pressure. You were in a long-term falling wedge formation, and it's, at some point, you need, you need to expect a bullish result. It's just a matter of when. So why'd you even bounce on there? Let's put a line. Uh, you vibrated it before. You vibrated around it before in the past. You vibrated around it before as well in the past. It's just a range of support, a range of resistance that the stock likes to hug around before you get a push to the upside or the downside. So with you being on a massive falling wedge formation, with you catching support early, I would like to say you're just setting yourself up for a bullish pop. What's the volume looking like? Hmm. I mean, on the day on the the day on the massive run up, there was a lot of bullish volume, but there has there really hasn't been anything since. Anything nutty happening in the RSI for the daily chart? Massive falling wedge and the daily. I mean, in the RSI. I mean, yeah, you're just setting yourself for a bullish pop. You got that bullish pop, but you need to see the continuation in it. That's it. The RSI shows a breakout. It seems like people were buying for the breakout, but the price action shows another rejection. <laughs> I thought this were butts, not elbows. <laughs> Dude, those look exactly like cheeks, man. But they're multicolored. BBIG says Southern Red. Let's do it. Oh, yeah. First, we need to bring up BB. Oh, yeah. I need to clean it up. So we're going to do this, right? We're going to take everything out that's not needed. We're going to delete these falling wedges because we already played them out. Did I just delete something? I forget what I just deleted. I'll keep that 10, that 10 support, but I'll delete all of these down here. Delete this range, delete this range. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're in a new trading channel, but I want you to notice this real quick. You have just now entered yourself into a bullish trend. Basing off of high and ashy candles, I mean, if I were to bring regular candles over, you could see there's a little bit of consolidation throughout this run-up, but basing off of str strong trends alone, you've only gotten one massive daily red candle in the high and ashy chart. So you just now entered into yourself a two-month-long falling wedge formation. Consolidation, right? Is it really consolidation if it's bullish consolidation? Yes, it is consolidation. And yes, it is bullish consolidation. <laughs> just like I answer myself, so. Bearish trend. You finally started meeting the selling pressure with bullish pressure. What am I going to do next? Uh, let's do this. You were in a sideways channel because of that. Let's make this one yellow. Okay. So massive falling wedge formation consolidation. You just now entered yourself with buyers meeting the sellers. Finally, you're not death anymore. And then guess what? All you need is a lick of some bullish activity and you just now got that breakout a couple days ago. You're trying to find support at some sort of range and you have a ton of them to catch law in the more long-term view. So the closest one I would want to see a bounce at is 1090. If you're catching support early though today at around $11, bouncing off of it, vibrating around it, just not falling under it, even, even though you're getting a mass amount of selling pressure, understand you're setting yourself up a lot better than probably anticipated, a lot better than what you can just see alone in price activity. You're in a massive falling wedge. I mean, a rising wedge. So you should expect some bearish consolidation to happen, a bearish rundown at some point. But the only thing we need to do to continue to end this is to remain with some bullish. I mean, to remain with some bullish momentum. It's as simple as that. With even with bullish momentum during this rundown, people expecting to buy the dip, you still get it playing out for two months straight. We just entered a week and a half ago into this bullish trend. I don't see why it would just end now in a snap of a finger. But consolidation had to happen. You're running up, testing, running back down to test, running back up, testing, running back down to test. What's after that? I mean, we just need to get the continuation of bullish volume. Look at, oh my gosh, man. Just talk about closing right in the middle. We're literally hugging $44. Just wanted to let you know you were not alone there, buddy. <laughs> For the cheeks. <laughs> that is geek, dog. Thank you. How about IRM? Let's check that out too. But first, let's bring up BBIG. So we can see what's playing out next. I love looking at these volatile stocks because these are the hardest to do TA on, but um, I'm extremely microscopic and macroscopic when it comes to TA. So uh, the way I the way I kind of do it, it's almost impossible to be wrong because I'm giving you the best and worst case scenario while I'm speaking about it. 
tricks, tricks, tricks. By the way, I got Ivy crushed in my call. I did not practice what I preached. <laughs> so this is what you're running with right now. Um, you cut that rejection super fast, which is kind of unfortunate because it was used as a support in the past as well. I wonder if volume's dying out right now. Huh? No, not really. Three million in volume. 107 million in volume. It's not really dying down whatsoever. Um, and the selling pressure is not there either. I mean, you are getting mass sell-offs, but the, the large pushes that you're getting in this one-hour candles alone, just the one-hour candles, you're getting like 43 million volume. This massive one-candle push from 7 to 12 was a 107 million volume one-hour candle. A lot of volatility being pushed into the stock right now. Uh, with their average volume as of right now being 33 million, the fact that they were up over 126 million volume alone shows one thing. Either people are buying the dip, expecting for the rip, or two, there's a mass amount of sell-offs. Basing off of the volume alone, you can tell that it's not a mass sell-off. So people are expecting a, a bounce tomorrow. What you want to see, since it's a rising wedge, is to get that reassuring bounce, the reassuring break above this resistance, and the reassuring, the reassuring run up to get that third test on this ascending resistance. You already have the third test on the ascending support as of recently. So you want to get the follow through on the resistance. It's looking good, man. It's looking good. It's looking more than it looks. It looks beautiful more than anything. But since it is such a volatile stock, since you've been so high up in these ranges for a long time and you're in a rising wedge, you got to expect a bearish result at some point. You got to expect a bearish result now, but there's not a timestamp on it. So understand that you're going to be getting a bearish result. Just play it until you can start seeing when you, when you see a little bit of weakness. Like if I could be bullish on it right now, it could rip up to here. And since I know that it's gonna that it's in a rising wedge and I'm gonna expect a bearish result, I'll take my attendees up here, take my profits up here. But that's BBIG. IRM, let's do it. Oh my, oh my, oh my, said the guy. That was a little bit too short term. What's long term looking like? Pushing, man. Oh my goodness. The stock likes to push. It's doing the yearly chart. Doesn't like to stop either. You just made it over this long-term resistance too. Oh, consolidation has to happen. Let me tell you that right now though. The last consolidation you had, you ran up from around this low point of 42 to the high point of this range. You caught a consolidation pounce at 38.2% retracement. That is the most extremely bullish retracement that I've ever seen in a long time. And you can see this was the result afterwards. People noticed the early bounce that you got when you didn't get a true healthy consolidation. You just got a straight bullish consolidation. And that gave you the ability to get some buyers to push you into that next leg up. Now, unfortunately, in this long-term view of thing, your daily your RSI daily chart is up to the moon. Your chart in totality is up to the moon. So you got to expect some consolidation next. If you are uh, in totality going to be getting, what was this again? 38.2% retracements. Then you should go to the down point to the top and expect a bounce at $48 flat. That's only a rundown to this low point of you're only missing out on a dollar and 30 cents for consolidation per share. But if you want to start testing these harder ranges at around 50%, you're going to start reaching under the ranges of $48. If you want to get the truest, most strongest technical bounce to indicate you're going to get a little bit of some bullish activity ahead, you still have this ultimatum resistance that you were running with that could be used as an ultimatum support. And that, that's just a decider for you getting a next leg up. You're in, you're in new territories. You're in new trends. So you're going to start making those new trends. Holy moly, bajolies though. When does it stop? When does it stop? I, I want to see if this even abides by anything. No, I don't like it. I like this. Okay. Oh, bearish. Ooh, bearish. Oh, wow. This is some interesting stuff. You got the clean slice over the ultimatum resistance, but this is the difference, right? You you're expecting you should expect consolidation soon because not only were you in a rising wedge, you're entering yourself into the rising support, the ascending support being used as an ascending resistance. So unfortunately, you may push a little bit more on Tuesday. You may ride this up, but you got to get consolidation at some point. And um, you made it under the falling wedge. You're using it as a resistance. You're setting yourself up for that neg for that leg up, but it might take a little bit of time for real. Looking good, looking good. You just want to expect some consolidation. Think of it like this, right? This right here is literally the exact thing playing out just in a more macroscopic view, but of this right here. So 
Let's do this. It's an extremely volatile shot up, of course, but you should have expected a rundown. Jeez, <laughs> this is almost too volatile to do it. Okay, there we go. So zoom in a little bit more to make it look more healthier, right? You were in a rising wedge. You finally got the consolidation under, and then you looked bullish. You broke over this last high, but you rejected off the descending resistance or around there, right? And then you started to see some weakness consolidation into the stock. Now, the only difference is, is it took a long time before you tested the same ranges, but you entered into your bearish trend. That's the whole decider. People who don't take their attendees are either going to be left bag holding or are going to just average down to a more longer term view of things. But from a macro, from a microscopic short term view, if it was me, non-financial advice, I would take those attendees. There's talks that, SM, the, that GME is going to the S&P 500. Really? Isn't it in the 400 right now? Will GameStop stock finally break the curse of earnings season? So dumb. <laughs> it's like Motley Fool's been wrong for eight months straight and they're still pushing bearish sentiment towards it. S&P 500 GameStop. Oh yeah, it is in the S&P 400 as of right now. So the S&P, for some reason, stands for Standard & Poor's. Will be the following changes to the 500 and 400. Oh, okay. So this is actually about the 400. Dow Jones is being acquired by the S&P 500 News Corporation. The only thing I see is it was them being added to the 400. GME is now three times as valuable as the smallest S&P 500 stocks. I just, yeah, I mean, I don't see how it could be announced as a small cap like that. But that'd be a good thing. It'd be a good thing. It'd just be another index fund. I mean, keeping the stock price around the current price of the actual market, like the Russell. I think we were off way better before we started getting added into all of these funds and all these index funds and stuff like that. All these ETFs, 13Fs, whatever the hell you want to flip and call it. I think AMC and GME was a lot better off before we started being added to these. Of course, it adds more to the market cap. It adds more buyers to the shares. I mean, it adds more buyers to the float. But at the end of the day, like these, these these institutions, these ETFs, these banks, whoever it is behind the scenes picking up the stock in mass amounts, Understand that they're not using it to our advantage. They're probably lending them out to other institutions, to other st uh, banks and stuff, so they can short those stocks. It's as simple as that, though. I mean, I would like to not think that way, but it's probably what's playing out. I see what's happening right now, though. For the IWM, show us what you're made of. Gee! Parallel, let's touch the top to the top. You're on the slightest, the slightest falling wedge formation, descending resistance, descending support. Setting yourself up for a bullish result. Interesting. Can't wait till Tuesday since K bins. <laughs> Me neither, dog. Me neither. But we got to get lit, man. We got to enjoy ourselves this weekend. Like me, I think I'm probably going to um, try, try to get some of my college buddies to come down from up in the north so, they can, uh, so we can have a good time and drink beer. I'm still crying and not getting in on M on Moderna. Started at around 40 or 50-ish and now at 400. Is it really, dude? No way. Oh my God, it's been trucking. I, I even put a resistance line up here too. So many stocks to look at. It, uh, tomorrow is always tomorrow. And as you can see, that tomorrow is always tomorrow turned into a couple months. And as you can see, that month, that next month is always next month turned into a massive rip from 200 to 400. 500 actually. I'm still not crying on getting in on it. I'm still crying. What is, um, does Johnson & Johnson have a stock? I believe they do. Johnson & Johnson. Only 175. Having a little bit more trouble. This is like, um, Johnson & Johnson compared to Moderna. Is like, is like the hedge funds all the way in the back when like, when, when did Netflix come out, right? When did Netflix, hold on a second. A little bit of a brain fart. Five years ago. Okay. So <laughs> Johnson and Johnson is like the Netflix during the times of 2016, 2015, 14, if you will, when wall street was extremely bearish on Netflix. They were so bearish to the point where they were dragging the stock price down a lot. You went from opening at around 34 cents for Netflix per share to running 
to five dollars, almost six dollars. And then guess what? Talk about a pump and dump, man. You went from six dollars flat all the way right back, right back down to one dollars. It was a hard time to let Netflix run. You even popped in 2011 from 42 all the way down to 10 again. Low point being six dollars. If if people don't like holding conviction through that is a lot of conviction. And as you can see, once Wall Street figured out they, oh, finally, after three to four years, we were wrong about Netflix. It rips all-time highs. Currently today, you're testing all-time highs to at 590, 598. Uh, Johnson & Johnson is like the Netflix back then compared to the COVID-19. Just like how Netflix was being compared to movie theaters and how Wall Street was bullish on movie theaters and they were bearish on Netflix. Now, they're bullish on Netflix and they're bearish on uh, AMC and just the movie theaters in totality. But you can see that Johnson & Johnson is having a harder time being able to run. But it is running, of course. It is running. But Moderna, though, man. Moderna just straight green bars. <laughs> Not stopping. Oh, this is on the monthly chart for Johnson & Johnson, too. On the weekly, it even looks more choppy. Craziness. Let's bring GME back up. Let's bring BB back up. MDIS. Earnings coming up, by the way, for BB. In around, uh, in around 20 days. So hopefully that'll be some good news. If not, I'm expecting quarter four to be extremely profitable. To actually show Wall Street that BB could be making some profits. Other than that though, we're just kind of basing everything else other than uh, other than the earnings per share and the revenue. Because when it comes to BlackBerry, those are the only two financials that they're having a hard time carrying. And maybe they're operating activities for cash flow. But that's three. That's three out of everything that's tied into your balance sheet and financials that is doing bad. Which is funny to me because <laughs> out, out of all of their financials, if they really only have three things doing bad, earnings per share is still meeting their expected earnings. Revenue is still meeting their expected revenue. But since it's on a downtrend, Wall Street shifts it into a bearish outlook. It's that simple. Cash flow activities, they'll tell you back and forth as in Wall Street will tell you back and forth over and over again. Financial media will tell you over and over again that BlackBerry has poor operating activities for cash flow. What? That's, there's three activities in the cash flow. First of all, investing is on an uptrend for the past two for the past two quarters. Financing activities on an uptrend for the past two quarters. But they don't tell you that stuff. Okay, that's just one indication of a millions of stocks that's being tied into Wall Street and their little uh, their their agenda, right? They're a lot more powerful than we think, too. Arm and Hammer much better than Johnson and Johnson. <laughs> I mean, I would agree with that. But Arm and, but Arm and Hammer does not make. Uh, vaccines, but they do make great dishwasher detergent. My favorite dishwater, dishwasher detergent. Does Arm & Hammer have a stock? No. <laughs> I was about to say, I was like, what, what? I mean, they do. No, it's Church and Dwight Co. That's interesting stuff. Look at this, man. This is Church and Dwight Co's, uh, that's their symbol. And then Arm and Hammer. Yeah, cool. It's literally the same exact thing, but a different name. <laughs> yes, Arm and Arm with Hammer stock photo. That's exactly what I wanted to see. Rack Tech says yes. <laughs> I heard th I heard around three fifty soon for Jamie, but I'm not a financial advisor. I would agree with that. Born Abundance says I never connected to those dots out of being in the index, and I think that's very true. They lend out the shares. Oh, it's it's a hundred percent true. I could probably find out something now about that just on the internet real quick, but I don't know if I want to do it. Um, spy. Like the S&P 500 literally has a portfolio and they have bets against certain companies. So that's a conflict of interest alone because they have an S&P 500 mid cap. They have an S&P 400. They have all these other ETFs and stuff that have to own stock. They have to own certain amount of stock. So, <laughs> it's just it's just one small little point out of manipulation into this whole entire stock market that's being propped up on, manip on manipulation alone. Like that's the reason why they can't give us what the, what we want, even though everything in all totality is pointing to the MOAS for all of our favorite stocks. But they can't. They literally can't give us what they want yet. Is the key word yet? Until they find out a certain way to um, deal with <laughs> deal with their over leveraged losses that they're currently dealing with right now. Another good person that you need to talk about, and I did hit him up recently, so if you, uh, says every drug dealer, <laughs> um, that's, that's hardcore drugs right there, though. I wouldn't know. Either way, what is it? 
Oh, man. Damn it. I shouldn't have read the chat. God, I always lose what I was about to say. Oh, yeah. YouTuber. There's this YouTuber that I want you guys to check out. He's a great guy. He's a great guy. Oh, look. It's me. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. Let me see if I can find him real quick. If, and if you do talk to him, go to his live streams. Tell him that I sent you. He's probably going to be like, who the F is Camden? <laughs> but at the same time, it, it, it'd be nice for you guys to let him know. His name is Boss Blunts. Yeah, Boss Blunts. He's a new stock trader. I mean, he literally just came out of nowhere. And what I did a couple of days ago was this right here. Nope, this video. Play it on two times speed and literally just run it through. Like, AF Alums has so much opportunity buy now. I 100% agree. As of right now, with everything being so 50 50 between buyers and sellers in the market, bulls and bears, there's a lot of opportunity for a bunch of different stocks, bullish or bearish case scenarios, uh, to make some tendies, man. It really is. AF Alums is super, super bullish. Me too. But GME to 350? <laughs> yeah. Not only did you get that fat technical breakout, you also got followed by a fat run-up. You also got followed with a beautiful consolidation bounce down here at around 190 flat. You took a huge bounce after that, retesting this resistance, and you're just in a sideways channel once again. They're trying to drag you down as much as they possibly can, but it's to the point where it's like, hey, you already have them in a straddle. Oh my gosh, I shouldn't have done that. Pause, dog. Holy freaking moly. But when it comes to GME, oh God, when it comes to GME, you're straddling these short sellers. Like they are in at, at around 195, $190, $190 flat for their position in the short selling position, or they could have just borrowed stock at around that time. Either way though, with us above $200 for GME, all we need is some more natural bullish activity to put a lot more pressure on the short sellers and to basically just like, I don't know, to get say goodbye bye, say bye bye to the rest of the 6 million on loan. I think there's 7 million now though. Oh, it's 6.5 now. Cool, 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 cool. But this is what I want to show you just so you can understand what I'm talking about. Average age of the shares on loan. These are the shares on loan up here. There's only 6.5 million shares on loan as of right now in the float of, I mean, in the float of GME. This is borrowed stock. But when it comes to GME, AMC and all these meme runners, do you really think over leveraged hedge funds, big players in the game, is just going to pick up a mass amount of shares on loan and not short them into the market? Either they're, either they're doing that or they're just simply waiting to pull the trigger. Nobody's borrowing stock and then being like, okay, it's time to return it. <laughs> they have to pay for these for this borrowed shares. They have to pay for this borrowed stock. So that doesn't make any sense. Second of all, um, you have the average age of the shares on loan. This is an amounts of days to being 38 days. You still you still see some picked up today and yesterday, of course, but the overall average is going to be these shares on loan being held for 38 days. So take it at face value. Let's go back 38 days. 30 days flat would be the third of last month, August 3rd. And then I need eight more days after that. One, two. Um, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So to give them the benefit of the doubt, since it is the Monday of July, we're just basically going to go through the highest price throughout this week to give the short sellers the benefit of the doubt. Even though we don't want to, we're going to do it. <laughs> so July 26th, let's, uh, let's go to that. Man, you can just see like July 26th, the highest price range throughout this whole entire week, which is that Monday is at 186 at the high for the day the high for the day. With you hugging over $200, with you catching support bounces at 190 flat, then there's a lot of pressure right now on these short sellers and they're not even covering. They have no freaking clue what the hell they want to do next. Bitcoin going up says 1 billion. What? <laughs> oh goodness. Lee Manu says, I don't see it in the description. What? Don't see what in the description? Let me know, let me know, let me know what's up with you. Over 6 billion shares, so low buy now. Over 6 billion shares. Um, oh, that's why. AF Alam and K Benz, look, they have similar similar colors. My bad. K Benz, can you look at BBIG? Let's check it out real quick. I just looked at it earlier, but I'll always run through it quick. Since I already have all the lines up, it's pretty easy. That is not BBIG. I wish. Okay, so. Other than a super massive technical breakout, what? You're not pushing today. So I'm thinking about a different stock. Either way. I hate these lines. I hate them, I tell you.
So short term, microscopic view, of course, you've just now entered yourself into a bullish trend. This is also just seen as a rising wedge and you're expecting to get consolidation at some point, but you're not anywhere near that soon. You just got yourself out of a uh, pretty volatile falling wedge formation. Let's do this real quick. Something like this. I probably missed out on a little bit of a rundown. I probably missed out on the short little run up, but regardless, this is the current trend that you were running beforehand. You were bound to get a bullish pop. You ended up getting the bullish pop over the rising wedge, and you're now trying to enter yourself into a bullish trend. Even in the aftermarket, you're kind of pinched in this little diamond formation. You're bound to pop one way or another, my friend. You just got to hold through it, or maybe you expect to see, or, or expect to see red kind of preparing for the worst. So even if the worst happens, you were still prepared for it. Um, you just entered yourself into a rising wedge. Keyword, just. So I don't really see you just dying now, but it's a pretty volatile stock. You've been fighting back and forth between bulls and bears, bulls and bears. You're 50, you're more 50, 50 than ever. Okay. That's pretty much it. You're like your, your over your overall resistance. Your ultimatum resistance is this $10 range flat. Your overall support is down here at around $6. You're right smack in the middle at around eight. And you're just in a 50, 50 triangle formation about to pop one way or another. But that's for BBIG. Something's not right here. 25 watchers and only 23 likes. <laughs> hey, Gold Ring Ghost Spike knows what's up, my dog. You already know that, G. And he always speaks the facts. He always speaks the truth in the chat. So if you really want to pay attention to anybody who speaks facts, speaks the truth, don't pay attention to me. Pay attention to Ghost Spike, man. And also know that if I was watching your stream or if I was on your channel, I would like and subscribe and you wouldn't even have to ask me. It's as simple as that. Ragtech says, what, what? The F alum, <laughs> a what AF alum? My bad. Over 6 billion shares so low by now. Look at BBIG. Are you talking about low volume for BBIG? Oh, never mind. I keep getting all mixed up. Bitcoin going to 1 billion, over 6 billion shares. So low by now. Talking about uh, tokens. Let's check it out real quick. I do have a lot of stuff laid out for, uh, for Bitcoin. Stop hiccuping, Camden, I swear. Or I'm going to go ham hey, in the membrane, I'm in the membrane, in the brain. All right, this is what you're rocking with. Bitcoin, let's run it. Let me know, let me know. So short-term, microscopic view. You're actually about to get a uh, cross over in this TSI, entering that you're, uh, indicating that you're probably going to see some bullish activity ahead. I might go long on it again, but I just was long on it down here. Either way, this is the only reason why I was long on it. You were like in this formation. Uh, my bad. Another one up here. What? Where's my parallel lines at? Gee, I can't run this. What's going on? Okay. Why did I go bullish? Okay, something like this. Phew. I was like, what the hell is going on, man? So I was looking for a nice little reassuring bounce. You actually got a common doji and it indicated some indecisiveness, some buying pressure, meeting the selling pressure. You got a couple candles ahead and you broke over the indicators of resistance for this Ichimoku trend as of right now. So that's bullish right off the bat. This is a microscopic view and then to get even more microscopic, right? Because we love doing it, man. Let's do this. You're setting yourself for a, le a next leg up as well. Now, there's never a timestamp when it comes to this. You should be expecting a little bit of some more bearish activity ahead, uh, maybe a run up and another rejection to run back down because you have supports for the Ichimoku down here while you have the resistance up here. Um, I would expect a little bit more consolidation to catch that since you, if you were just to simply do a retracement. I always can't find the retracements. I think they're up here. Yeah, Fibonacci retracement. You can see you're running up to test some consolidation, and these ranges only so far have reached the 38.2% retracement. So you're seeing bullish consolidation. You already got a bounce right here on the support. What would be a more healthier bounce would be a run back down to this 50% uh, retracement. And as you can see, the exact point that that is is down here at this support on the Ichimoku, waiting to get that nice little bounce. So you really get the continuation around there. If you don't get it, you know you're probably going to leak a little bit more. But take it one step at a time, right? Let's go back into the... Uh, this. You were just into a rising wedge formation. You just now got a clean uh, break under it, right? If you will. So you should have expected some bearish activity ahead in the macro, in the microscopic view, not macroscopic. Other than that, though, um, you're really setting yourself up for an next leg up. I just don't really see yourself continuing to push. 
If so, though, prove me wrong. The only way you could continue to push is going to be a bounce pretty much now. If you get the bounce now, a clean breakout, and you start running to test these last highs again back here, you get a clean breakout over 5,550 for Bitcoin. That's crazy. That's up that high. That's really what you want to get a nice clean break above. You tried to break over it beforehand. You sliced right back down under it to test the same activity. You want to get a clean reassuring bounce next. The monitor says, uh, I'm enjoying a twisted tea at the moment. Hey, I got a Miller High Life calling my name at home and I'm about to, yeah, 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 let's go. Oh my goodness. <laughs> chuck, 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 chuck. It's almost beer 30 time. Hey, Lori already knows what's up. True. Hey, so true though. For real. Let's run it. Look up Tupac. You know, sometimes my curiosity does in fact get the best of me. Oh. Yeah, it's like I actually thought. No way. Tupac's not a stock? I'm going to have to crack one now. Yes, sir. Lori, you read my mind. Great minds. Think alike. Says, says Lori, 100% and true. Cheers and enjoy the weekend, you too, Lamanu. Hey, it is already 604. That's crazy. That's why I love doing TA so much. It's because I can talk about it for hours upon hours upon hours upon literally hours. Chug it. <laughs> chug, chug, chug. All right, this one's for the shoot game crack. <laughs> Are you watching some football tomorrow? Yes. No. Yes, I am. In fact, tomorrow's our draft day for, for fantasy football. Me and, me and Papa Ape have um, some boomers. I'm just kidding. I'm just the only churn in it, man. I'm the only churn in it. Cheers and enjoy the weekend, you too. What do you think about Doge or ADA? I love ADA. I've made a... Off of ADA alone... Oh, my bad. Off of ADA alone, I made, I turned $80, or my bad, I turned $85 if I need to be exact, to 160 As of right now, I think I'm currently long on nothing, but let's check out ADA. Made a lot of freaking money off of it in this bullish, bullish cycle. It doesn't seem like a lot. Look at, my, look at my own algorithm I'm building right now. Looks ridiculous. And it's not even like building your own algorithm. Like that sounds silly talk, but... Just placing as many lines as I possibly can in the long-term view of things because you never know at some point in the future you could be testing the same lines. You could just be ready for it rather than having to make continuous lines over and over again. And I'm making sure to delete all the ones that are descending because I don't really see ADA falling whatsoever. If it does, maybe I'll start doing some descending lines, but a massive run-up was bound to happen for ADA. I love it so much. It's a daily chart. Nope. Hourly chart. Let's do the let's do the one-hour chart. Something like this. <laughs> Oh my goodness, it's so crazy. It's like, what, are you, what am I even looking at right now? Yeah, just a massive cup and handle played out beautifully. You even got the perfect cup and handle. That's when I saw this playing out. I started to go long on the stock. I was even retracing the rundowns and the runups, and it was playing out beautifully, man, nonstop. Just bullish indicators out the ass. And I ran it up, ran it up, ran it up. I scalped every single trade. I didn't hold throughout the long-term run, but made, made some tendies off of it, about, a, about 100%. 100% on this run-up. What's your favorite beer cam? Ooh, Miller High Life all the way. But there's been this one that my friend, that, that one of my best friends put me on and it's called Island. It's a little expensive for beers, but it's made in South Carolina, in Charleston. Wow, that's actually, that's pretty cool, man. Hey, that's pretty lit, hey. But this is what it looks like and it's just delicious. Not as delicious as, uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit more heavier than, the Miller High Life, but it just has that champagne of the beer's taste. It really does. It's very smooth. The aftertaste hits you a little bit weird at first, but you get used you get used to it in a matter of an instant. I could shotgun that beer right now. Oh, in two seconds. In two seconds. It looks like a kid's scribble. <laughs> Trust me, I know, but watch. Ah, oh, it looks a lot better. It's just because I was on a daily candle or I was on the multi-hour candles. It's just a bunch of lines. Uh, throwing it, but I never go on a macroscopic view for cryptos. I'm always day trading it. I'm always scalping it. So that's why I keep it in a more smaller view and just know there's one right next to it. <laughs> that is beautiful that I can just break into a daily chart that you can get a general image of. <laughs> that's funny. Have you tried blue moon? Yes. Love blue moon. And what's your thoughts on IPAs? I can't stand them yet. I, I, st I still have that. I still have the young taste buds. Like as much as I want to enjoy them, as much as I want to go out on a bar with uh, with my pops and all of his uh, and all of and my family members, my uncle and all of them, and just sip on a nice IPA. I can't do it. You know, I'd be sipping a light beer, and the chick that could have loved me from across the bar is not going to come to me anymore because she sees me. I'm drinking a light beer. 
Unfortunately, it's how it is, and I'm not going to make myself uncomfortable just to get, uh, just to make, uh, just to seem appealing to a female. <laughs> I'm just like, what? Like, what are you talking about? Hey, regardless, I do love Blue Moon. Um, it's a little off to me though. I would drink it if I have to. And I think out of all of the heavier beers, I think Blue Moon's got to be one of the best out of all of them. That's a nice looking can. I would, I would like to try it. Looks like a kid's scribble. <laughs> K Ben says, any thoughts on MMAT? Let's check it. I do have thoughts on MMAT. Three months, it's gone a couple hours. So you got a pretty strong rejection, but guess what? You needed it. You should have expected it too. Regardless, you're on an ascending support. You're on a, are these even parallel? Like, why aren't they parallel? OMG. There we go. Perfect. Something around there, right? You just have a descending, I mean, ascending resistance. You have an ascending support. It's a little premature, but this rejection that you got recently was just proof and indication that this is in fact a true trend for MMAT. You're in a pretty longer term rising wedge. After you got yourself out of a smaller term rising wedge, it's extremely bullish, by the way, for you to get a breakout above a rising wedge because um, it usually ends in a bearish result. But also in all totality, the fact that you entered yourself into a massive rising wedge, it could have just been like this, right? Damn it. Could have just been something like this. Like a law, a wider term view of a rising wedge. You never know what the stock market's going to bring, so you got to make sure you're playing out all case scenarios. But I did have like a 50-50 trend kind of playing out. It was extremely volatile way up. It was an extremely volatile way down. You got a little bit of some rejections here and there. You also got a nice clean bounce off of this up here. So I was expecting a bullish pop because this is too much of a sending support for you to really to continue to abide by it. Uh, if anything, you wanted to you wanted to get another test down here and with this third test and a bounce immediately after this day, it was all the reassurance you needed was just to get a continuance of a rip. So you ended up breaking back up. You got that test on the ascending resistance for the massive rising wedge. And now you're running back down to test this short-term microscopic support and uh, just this short-term descending resistance. Of course, you can do sideways lines when it comes to TA. You can do sideways supports and resistances, but it also plays out like this too. Like if I were to generally do this, instead of this descending resistance, just do this. You can see you rejected off of beforehand and now you're using it as a support. There's just a lot of different things that ties, that ties into the stock market's algorithm and there's a lot of different ways you can do TA. Y'all hear the rumor of MMAT having an office in the same building Tesla has an office of some type? I actually never heard of that. I, don't, I really don't pay attention to MMAT's fundamentals or a company whatsoever. Uh, I just did a video on it a couple days or yesterday on the TA side of things. Stone Cold Steven Austin's IPA is the best IPA I've ever had so far. Broken School IPA Review. Oh, it's actually, oh yeah. Stone Cold Steve Austin's El Segundo IPA Review. That's amazing, dude. Those cans look crazy. It's just like a, it's something that me, me, it's something that you could tell just would be strong in taste. It's something that you can tell that really only Stone Cold Steve Austin um, would generally be the main lover of this. <laughs> just, uh, yeah, it's just for, it's a manly beer, it seems. Like, too manly for me, Paul's. Obviously not too manly for Rack Tack, though. It looks, it looks dope. It does. Look at those cans, too. Interesting stuff, like, I would sip out of it. I would. Me personally, I like upper upper class beer, like natural ice. I like natural ice too. I really do. IPAs are something that that one gets used to. I just turned twenty one, and I agree with the young taste buds comment. <laughs> I just turned, yeah, yeah, I did. Um, but it's true, you know. Local from my area, that IPA got me into IPAs was all day IPA. I like Blue Moon too. It says Born Abodum. All day IPA. Isn't there one called um? What's the what's the pernicious? Pernicious. The did you say something about that born about him a while ago? You were talking about the something pernicious. Oh, nice. <laughs> well, I mean, it does look like it'd be local beer though, for sure. It's like one of those underground delicious that not too many people know about. Those bottles though. Fire.
I'm a Michelob Ultra girl. I do Blue Moon and Citrus IPAs. Can't do the sours though. Oh, me neither. I mean, I probably could do the sours, but I'd wake up with the most massive headache and probably want to kill myself. But that's not even, it's not even jokes. It's being for real. It's just the sweet drinks, the sweets and the sours, man. That, that makes me wake up with just the most worst headaches I've ever had in my life. I'm a Michelob Ultra girl. I like Michelob Ultra. I do. Um, you can shotgun those like water though. You really can. <laughs> I feel like I drink IPA and craft beers just to collect the cool cans. I mean, aren't those, um, like, can't those at, at some point be worth something? Or is it just like a, is, is that a myth that I was told? Was that one of my young myths? My myths that, that I was told by my teachers? Save your, IP can, save your IPA cans. ADA, I love it though. Bringing in a more recent view. You're setting yourself up for a next leg up, of course. Just like Ethereum is, just like Bitcoin is. There's a parallel channel. I'll, I'll probably go long on it too. I just want to get a nice little breakout formation. What is this? I don't know if I like that. Gots to see through it, Camden. It's not a falling wedge. It's just simple consolidation. Wowzies. Maybe it's you just entered yourself into one. Oh yeah, me likey, me likey. For real. What the hell? Oh hell yeah, you got room to fall. This is a volatile straight shot down, but this is just what this is what shakes out the conviction of the long investors, and then people catch the dip, and then people start ripping it up. It's as simple as that. So I'm looking for a support bounce at around this range up here. I'll bring this one down because it was a resistance line. Uh, this is gonna be at around two dollars and ninety-three cents. You're already getting a cream candle after that, but it's a little premature. Um Oh, I can see where you bounced off of too. Still, I want to get a nice little run down to this range or at least close to it. And then you also have supports at this lower range. I would look for the consolidation bounce, the strongest one being at around $2.93 for uh, ADA. Got to see through it, boy. Sounds like a myth. Yeah, I was about to say. And it's just like a seasonal or only come once every three years or something. Okay, now I'm going to start. Uh, now I'm starting to understand the logic of Apple. You got to, you got to think. The can's pretty to be able to drink the beer. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It really is. Like uh, people say, people say you should never let first impressions do anything. You should never let, you should never let the look of something. Uh, what is it called? The book of the cover of a book be the decider, but it's natural instinct. <laughs> like nobody can argue that. Like if somebody were to generally come up to me and just act like a complete asshole. And then tomorrow they're like the nicest person ever. Really? You accepted me for my first impression? No. Nah, gee, you're, you're, you're catching support pretty early right now. I want to see the continuation of a run-up. This, this would be the decider for that breakout too. A nice little descending double bottom formation. I would like that. I'm just kidding. I don't even think there's such thing as a descending double bottom formation. But it's looking like you're getting a run down, a run back up, another run back down, and then you're getting a support early to retest that resistance and you should be able to break out above this next. It is 616, man. 616 is crazy. As much as I don't want to leave, dude. Uh, stay with me forever. <laughs> Just know that I'm probably going to be lo going long soon on ADA. I'm looking to catch that nice little reassuring bounce at an early range. You've only gotten one bounce on the bottom, two bounces on the top. So I'm looking for at least another second bounce on the bottom. Ooh, you're getting another run up. Uh, it's a little too premature. Apple logic. <laughs> uh, wait, there's such thing as Apple logic? No, oh, it works though. I'm just kidding. It's true. Hey, regardless, if you haven't subscribed, help a G out, man. Help a G out for real by hitting that subscribe button. Be a part of the Shrew Gang whether you like it or not. Shrew Gang. Hey, it's been lit, dog. Hey, we, the Wheel of Shrewness was today, so that was amazing too. I'm going to I'm gonna give some more plot. Never mind. Baby Ruthie isn't even here. I need, I need to let her know to take her gains. She she just won $42 last, or this week on the Wheel of Shrewness. Hey, is that, main, is that my name on the wheel? <laughs> yeah, says Louie. Yeah. Um, baby Ruthie, give me, give me your number. I'm just kidding. Give me your, let, I'm just going to say, let me send you money. 
So if you are part, if you are, if you aren't a part of the Sugar Gang yet, hit that subscribe button. It'll help me out more than you can even imagine. It'll get more people to come in and see the growth potential behind all the stocks that we love over here at the Shrewd Gang. Because I'm telling you right now, we don't just invest in these stocks for no reason. Um, we really don't. We only have three stocks <laughs> whatsoever. So it's been, it's been a wild ride from here. It really has. I'm I'm extremely humbled for this move. I mean, for this movement so far and how big it's gotten. Um, I'm surprised and I'm very happy about the same people that have been here from the beginning are still here because one of the main things about Camden is that he tends to <laughs> he tends to get annoying over time and there's nothing that I can do about it because it's just me but it's unfortunate you know it really is something that has hurt me over my long life of existence either way though it's beautiful to see a lot of you still here the long week it says born about him it's sad it makes me want to boo the hedges even more though <laughs> studies this bottle of Jack Daniels <laughs> oh yeah it makes sense Makes sense. So when I moved to Texas, my neighbor got me into Jack and Sprite. Uh, I'm, I'm more of a, um, more of a, uh, Jack and Sprite is good. I've, I've tried it before. Um, it's still really strong though, <laughs> but I'm more of a Apple Crown, Crown Royal, my yeah, was Apple flavored Crown Royal with Coca-Cola. Interesting. Jack and Sprite. Have a good week at Shrew Gang YouTube. Born about him. Hey. Shrew you can like it, by the way, as well, even though I just said it a million times, that would help me out more than you can even imagine. Regardless, though, I appreciate everybody being here from the start. We're going up from here. We're going to turn ourselves into the human algorithm. And every single day that passes, I feel like I learned still every single day um, more things that I didn't even know from the day before. So I want you guys to be along this journey. Learn with me. Teach me like, uh, like we can teach each other. It's as simple as that. If you put yourself in a room with the greatest minds, you're always going to get that best result. Hey, I like the Apple version. Uh, oh, yeah. Southern Red, thank you so much. Lori, thank you so much. By the way, we have Discord out there, so understand that this is going to be over 100 people in the Discord so far. I'll give you a nice little sneaky, weaky, little, nice little gander, if you will. Oh, my goodness. But there's a good amount of people in here. There's a good amount of bots. There's a lot of great energy in it. <laughs> what the hell was that? So if you want to be part of it, it's literally $5 to join. Unfortunately, I... I was, I've been screaming for the past four to five months through a virtual screen to get anybody to join the Shrewd Gang for free in the Discord. And then once we got to around 100, 150 people, I was going to cut it right there. And I'm going to make people start to pay a little bit dollar holler. So if you want to be a part of the Shrewd Gang exclusive Discord, then all you got to do is go click that Patreon link down below. It's also into the, what are they pointing, this way or this way? I think it's this way. Yeah, it's also in the sidebar in the chat up there on the blue. So if you want to click that as well. It brings you straight to the Patreon. You literally just pay $5 a month. You can even cancel it immediately if you want to, but it's just to unlock that Discord link. You can get the link and you can pop it right back in. Hey, I appreciate y'all being here, man. Hey, peace out, uh, <laughs> says, Le, says Le Manu. I'll catch y'all, boy. Someone's partying like a rock star. Patron? Later, Lori. It's always great to see you. Later, Ghost Bike. Ghost Bike, born a bottom, everybody. Somebody's got us. <laughs> appreciate that. I'll catch up, boy. Be safe out there as well so I can see y'all all... Shit! Ugh, boot the hedges. I'll catch up, boy. I'll see you on Tuesday. Peace out. Uh... Shrewd game.